<coughs> Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting. Chief, could you uh, direct us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting for October 1st, 2018. Public comment. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak at public comment? Come up and please give your name and an and address, please. Hi, I'm Deborah Elia, 493 Ocean Boulevard, Surfside 30 condominium. And we received a letter mailed September 20th that you're discontinuing our recycling. I've been trying to find the documentation that's referred to in the letter saying that it was condominiums documents and bylaws. We cannot find that anywhere. And I've asked, I even stopped town hall and I asked and they referred me to the big book up there and I could not find what it was referred to. Um, I would like to get a copy of that information. We, of course, are because we feel like in your town report it says <clears throat> recycling why it's so important and we agree completely we're all about recycling we think it's important for the environment we want to know first of all why we got such a short notice about canceling it being new to living in new, and I've only been here three years I didn't know there had been an issue before I did find that information online but we wanted to know what you based it on why it was decided so quickly that we weren't notified to even fight it or make any and we would like to maybe work out it you know discuss it or work out some other with the other condominiums and try and figure out if there's some solution we don't want to stop recycling we know it's important but if our condominium we don't have bins to put in some of the people are elderly they're not going to take it they're not we have 30 different units and there's no way and i hate to see us take 10 step back Rusty, I think I have a, I know we don't usually communicate with them. It's I think there might be an answer about what, what our bylaws okay. are. Okay, and, and just so you know, usually this is public comment, and we usually don't answer it, but if, if Rick wants to answer Thank it, you. it's fine. Well, what I was going to say is your bylaws must have been done some time ago, and um, the, the recycling is not as old as what your bylaws probably are. But... This is um, something that's been just decided, uh, and there isn't going to be any fighting it. It's the same for every single condo. We're no longer going to be picking up the recycling. So based on just condos, uh, not every resident, even though we're all paying the same yes. taxes, so we're, yeah. we already have our own trash pickup. But now mm -hmm. you're taking this other away There's going to be no more recycling being picked up for condos. But you're going to do regular houses, two room, two room houses, yeah. and I know for a fact you're still doing. We're not going to be able to discuss this with you, you know, because it is public comment. But I was just going to tell you, it probably that's why you're not finding it in your bylaws because it, it is in the bylaws. It, it is. It's in both. It's in both your condominium documents and your. Yes, I read them today. Well, could you oh. give me copies? I would if like you to, want to everybody in, I've talked to. You want to okay. come in and you want to pay for those copies? We can. I'd be to happy you. to. Okay, yeah. come in. See the selectman's office tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. We'll get you I'll those be happy copies. to do that. Thank you. I would so. have guessed that I wouldn't have been on there. I didn't realize. Yeah. 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 No, I bylaws any old. Bylaws that we have. I read them system. today. Okay. So, thank so you. you just come into the office tomorrow, and, and they'll, they'll produce okay. a copy of that for you. Great. Thank you. All right. Anybody else from the public who would like to speak? Public comment. Seeing none. Of announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise. Uh, yes, I, I did get this from the Recreation Office today, and I guess we're going to talk about uh, to this, the nice uh, gentleman on the submarine, but the Kids' Kingdom uh, supplies is going to be coming, uh, and this is what the new Kids' Kingdom is going to look like, and trucks are going to be coming in uh, to that area November 1st, and uh, the Kids' Kingdom people and the recreation people are looking for volunteers to help unload the trucks. So uh, we'll, I think, have this uh, hopefully uh, online, and uh, Mr. Welch will be looking to see if we can get uh, some of the uh, submarine uh, gentlemen since we've adopted the what, USS Virginia. Yep. 
So, so we'll see if we can get that because that will be nice. That whole new Kids Kingdom playground will be all new next year. But it's always good to have Hampton citizens helping out too. Right, so. absolutely. And number two, uh, all I can tell you is that I was disgusted after the public hearing on the bridge last Thursday and to read and see Coast Online about the General Sullivan Bridge that is so badly off that they're taking bicyclists and pedestrians off it. Somebody in Concord is being paid. And I don't know why we've got these red listed bridges, but I found that very frustrating to see. Regina? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say that I was down the beach yesterday for the Smutty Nose Road Race and it seemed to uh, have been a huge success. There was yeah. a lot of people down there. and. Uh, it was another good day for uh, for the community. That's all. Sure. Yeah. Um, I in, if these ladies want to sit around until old business, I will bring that up so we can discuss it, so that you'll be, you'll be able to hear about it, okay. and I think we can explain it to them then. Okay. So. Very good. Approval of the minutes for September seventeenth, two thousand eighteen. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Moved, second. seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. The consent agenda. We have a donation of old tax books to the Hampton Historical Society. Oh, yeah. We have a termination of a lease and new lease for 21 F Street. We have a parade permit for the Hampton Christmas Parade. And we also have a road closure permit for the Hampton Christmas Parade. Mr. Chair, if you could give just a brief explanation to the public, because I think it's very nice uh, on the uh, old tax books. Just that they, that, that the historical that, society's that, going to well, take we've, over. Well, we've digitized them, right? Is that what we have not? We haven't. No. But they are going to be taxing, so they'll be being held them, so they'll have them. So we'll the always Hampton have Hampton Historical Society. Correct. Yes. So that was nice of them to absolutely to take that on. So we have a motion. And I'll so move the consent agenda. Motion second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have an appointment with Chief Sawyer, Police Department. Where'd he go? Uh oh. There he is. <laughs> you guys didn't right, so I got to fix it. Ah, okay, thank you. First one we're going to do is extending school zone from High Street on Mill Road to Emory Lane. Yeah, I'm uh, brought to my attention by Public Works. Um, the current school zone only goes up a certain distance from High Street to about that area where you have that walkway mm -hmm. to access uh, Marston. And then there's another little section at the crosswalk at Emory. But in between, it's not designated a school zone. Yeah. So we're just trying to connect the two, so make that school zone extend all the way from High Street to Emory Lane on both sides of the road. Any questions? Do we need public works for that, or can we make, we a, make motion a motion now? Up to the board. Because I'll so move that we go ahead with that recommendation on extend, extending the school zone from High Street on Mill Road to Emory Lane. Second. Oh, second. All those in favor? Unanimous. That was painless. Purchasing two cruises from the Fund 26 private detail fund. As you may recall, I came to the board early in the year looking for one of the cruises to come out of the Fund 26 so we could use that money to... Uh, help move along the range project, not knowing what the end of the year finances would look like. Uh, things are a little bit tight right now, so I would ask uh, permission from the board to purchase a second cruiser from Fund 26 to free up that money so we can complete the range project in this year's budget as opposed to waiting till next year. Any questions of the board? Yeah, I have questions on this. Chief, purchasing two cruisers, I thought you just said one. No, the Is board previously gave me permission to purchase one cruiser. I'm now looking for permission to purchase a second cruiser. Okay, so it says two on here, so you're looking for the second one. Correct. Okay, and I have to ask you, um, <laughs> I understand that the range got cleaned, and did you get a little money from the... Uh, Lead or whatever. No, um, there's a very limited group of people that can perform that kind of work. Yeah. And the particular group, that's part of the, uh, the, the deal is they maintain the lead. Yeah. So we pay them, they mine the lead, and they haul it off, and they sell it for scrap. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you, it has been cleaned up. It's been cleaned. They, what they come in, it's kind of a, we went out and looked at the Chester Rod and Gun Club, and they were doing the project out there. Uh -oh. And it was very impressive, the operation. Uh, and the foreman of the unit uh, travels around the country doing this. 
and they, they excavate, they sift it, and then it goes right into the 55-gallon barrels, uh, just, just the lead. Wow. And then they ship it out so we don't have to deal with any of that. But it's recycled and yes. you get the, whoever gets money yep. for it. I don't remember hearing about the range being cleaned prior to this. Do you, is this the first time it's been cleaned? You You've think? talked about the range project, so we're going back probably that original range we've been shooting on for almost 40 years. Yeah, and I it, walked the streets there's, with there's that. There's millions of rounds that were in that yeah. backstop, um, so that really needed to get cleaned out. Uh, they did a very efficient job with it, but that's, you know, I'm thinking we're going to probably have to look at a project or some type of plan that probably every five to ten Routine. years we, we need to get back in there. We shouldn't be waiting 40 years to do that. Thank you for that because yep. that's an excellent thing to get done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have no questions. Thank you. Rick. No, sounds good to me. I'll need a motion to uh, so allow me the motion. purchase of an additional cruiser. Oh, I'll cruiser. second Rick. So I'll, I'll word it that way as an additional cruiser to the one you already got out of that fund. Correct. So that's a motion seconded by Mary Louise. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next thing is the acceptance of a horse from the Friends of the Mounted Patrol, Rocky. Rocky is the uh, horse that uh, retired Deputy Chief Pelletier and retired Sergeant John Galvin went down to Kentucky to the breeder that we use oh, wow. uh, and scouted this out. Uh, that was funded by the Friends of the Mounted, uh, the trip, and the entire cost of the horse that we're going to be purchasing is going to be funded. Uh, so this is considered a donation, so we do have to have a, an acceptance by the town to accept that donation from the Friends of the I'll Mounted. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. What's going to happen to the poor other? We're going to get to that one now. <laughs> <laughs> Declaration of a surplus of a horse, Bolt. Oh, don't call him surplus. I know, I, I don't like the language either, but uh, Bolt has been with the department. Um, number he is, he's 20 years old. Oh. We got him when he, I believe he was nine. Oh. So he has served us well. Um, but it's coming on that time where you know you get you get to that 20 year mark. You've got a lot of service out of a working animal. Yeah. So uh, with the board's permission, if you could leave that to my discretion uh, and what we're going to do with it. Normally, uh, Deputy Chief Pelletier, either if he's available, will take them on himself uh, Good. for the last years, or he will find a suitable home. And we actually we're going to we're going to ship him back to Kentucky, back to the farm Ooh. that we originally got him from. I'll, I'll make that motion. No. I'll motion. I'll second. second. All those in favor. You know. We're going to give him a going away party? <laughs> you extra I don't know about it. that. I know about the timing of it. This is all going to occur within the next couple of weeks. So there's okay. not a definitive date, but this will occur within the next two to three weeks. Excellent. Okay. This may be a dumb Do question, but what kind of horse is he? We use exclusively Tennessee walking horses okay. because of the gait. Yeah, he's here. Yep. It's uh, much, much smoother on the rider's back and right. better down on the beach riding in the sand. Tennessee walking. So why don't you, do you now that you think it's appropriate time to bring up that other issue? Um, the issue, are you talking about the dispatch issue? Yes. Yeah, uh, we've been notified by our uh, communications supervisor, Rhonda Stevens, of her retirement at the end of this month. Uh, one of the things we're looking to do, we've had deficiencies in uh, staffing in there. We've had to use, take police officers out of cars and put them in the desk. So what we're looking to do is create a year-round part-time position uh, that Rhonda would stay in that place, also serve as a director of communications mm -hmm. uh, with a great deal of flexibility to cover those areas. Uh, we have a particular shift every Thursday, uh, the three, uh, four to midnight shift, is vacant. So a lot of overtime gets expended on that and many other shifts yeah. when we don't have a qualified dispatcher to take it. So that will fill a need for the department in that area and give her the true ability to educate and teach and instruct, which is what she's outstanding at. What, so, I, what I look at this is it's not an additional position. It, you've taken a summer dispatch position and just made that a year-round part-time position. That's a good way to look at it because it's going to negate having to hire an additional part-time person for the summer, but it's also going to deal with some of the uh, issues of spending the, the amount of overtime we do during the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So I won't sit here and tell you that it's a, it's a total wash, but it's pretty close. And, and you will maintain an experienced dispatcher in the department to help the department as the year goes on so that you can have additional training perhaps and, and a stability uh, in the dispatch section. At this time in our history, we're, at, we're very inexperienced at the dispatch level. Right now we have two probationary dispatchers, which means they've got less than a year on. Mm -hmm. When Rhonda retires, we'll be hiring a third. So three out of the four full-time dispatchers will have less than a year on. So mm -hmm. maintaining Rhonda 
in this position would be a great asset to the education of these po folks, but also, as you highlighted, yeah. the stability of the communication section of the Hampton mm -hmm. Police Department. Very good. I just wanted to say that the dispatch is crucial to oh, the yeah. Uh, yeah. police department and Absolutely. also to the town as a whole, so I'm ready to make a motion that we take the chief's suggestion on this one. And I'll, I'll second. So we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Very That's good. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Chief. You. Next one is Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, and Jim Haffey from DPW to talk about asset management. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I'm going to let Jim do 99% of the talk. This looks complicated. Oh, no. God, no. I'm going to try to get through it as quick as possible. Uh, there we go. Uh, we're going to be talking about the asset management system that we've put into place at DPW. Um, I've been the primary point of contact for that, um, but it's been extended to pretty much all of our staff at this point. Um, things that I'm going to be running through are the goals that we're trying to First, say why we're here, and secondly, can you mention the lady? Can't hear you very well. Absolutely, yes. So um, we're here. Um, part of the system is um, a loan that we had from DES, and there's um, someone here from De DES, Deb, um, and she. They've been part of the Im implementation. They've been here for the training. Um, they've also been getting regular updates. This meeting tonight counts as sort of the last checkbox okay. um, that we have to go through to make sure that our system meets the requirements for principal loan forgiveness. So, it's part of the terms and conditions for that $60,000 uh, grant that we got to uh, implement this. And uh, part of it was we would agree to have um, if you will, a rollout meeting before you, the Board of Selectmen, and, and the public as a whole. So, go ahead. Okay, so I'll be going through the goals, what we're trying to achieve by having this system, um, the implementation process that we've gone through, um, the, the platform that we selected was People GIS, so a little bit about People GIS, the asset, asset inventory that we've uh, put together, communication plan that we've put together, level of service, um, calculating risk, going through the budgeting aspects of this, using the system, and then at the end we'll answer or we'll try to answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, so first with the goals, uh, this is what the DPW is trying to achieve through the development of an asset <coughs> management program. Um, the idea was to have a single comprehensive system that documents the steps taken from the initial call through the work being completed. This creates transparency and accountability by showing who did what and when. Uh, the system would track inspections and associated activities to document permit compliance. The system also increases efficiency by logging data directly into the system from the field versus filling out paper forms and then coming back to the office and filling out the data, it, putting it into the computer. Um, it manages documents and pictures that are associated with various assets. This reduces errors by having pictures taken in the field tied directly to the asset um, through GPS versus having to take a picture in the field and then going back to the office and taking each individual picture, tying it in. There's a good, very well chance that a picture could be of one catch basin and get attached to another catch basin. And then when they go back and try to look through the history of that catch basin, you see a picture that doesn't make any sense. And without having it directly tied to it, there's no way to know that basically that because that picture becomes useless because you don't know where when it was taken. I don't yeah. want to interrupt you. I just Go ahead. Sure. Do you have the technology to do this? Yeah, we're doing do, it right now. You it's are nice. comfortable that you have what you need so that people can instead of scribbling on the paper and all that yep. stuff. I just want to make sure that you're starting okay. So we're sure. actually getting away from the paper uh, literally when you call the department now. Um, most of those calls generate a service request. Mm -hmm. James that looks at them, I look at them, Jennifer looks at them, Dan looks at them, Toby Spainhauer looks at them, depending on whose department they're directed at. 
and from those we determine whether or not you know it yeah. warrants a further field investigation okay. and um, then if it generates a work order because less paper shuffling yes Absolutely. exactly and we're, we're hoping that we're I won't say losing calls but they are more efficient so people don't have to call okay. back three times about the same catch basin or if they somebody does call about a, a certain catch basin um, or a pothole or a trash or a limb down or whatever we, we've already got it uh, recorded and so can say oh yeah that was called in a half hour ago yes. we're right on top of it all right as long as we yeah. have the technology yeah. to do this and that, that's really what that this goal section talks about is it, it's to give the town a better level of service if Excellent. you will and better utilize the resources we have good uh, when I get down to number nine on this list which is using the system I'm actually gonna yeah. run through okay. a quick thing of what a typical call how the process works from beginning to end um, Go for it. Mouse works better on paper. Try that. Is, is yeah. the system working, gentlemen? <laughs> and that's why I suggested. Yeah, we, we have the uh, paper <laughs> along with this. Bring, bring the paper. We have a dead mouse. Don't, don't scare me now. <laughs> Why don't you just go ahead yep. and allow it? Okay. Um, so speaking about the goals, um, we're looking for a, a program that provides a systematic way to collect data and incorporate risk into the maintenance and capital improvement planning. Um, decisions are made based on the information we have. The more we know, the better decisions we can make. The additional data provides new and more accurate information that can be used to better allocate personnel and financial resources. Asset management is a cycle that continues and repeats as data is collected. We make a plan, we move forward with the plan, we collect more data, we revise the plan based on the new information, and then we collect more data. Uh, the overarching goal, the asset management system, is to provide the best possible level of service that we can, that based on the resources we have available. And the record. In the record, yeah, it's exactly a record. Like. You know, with, with some of these things, it may not seem important, but for instance, um, you know, it, when, a, when a stop sign is installed or, and when one is reported is missing, um, you know, for safety reasons, that's important. Um, we've, we've gotten multiple calls. Sometimes we've put up a street sign and um, literally it's gone within 48 hours and then someone <laughs> said, well, you never put it up. Uh, yeah, in actuality, we did. So, um, no, it, this, this is uh, hopefully going to eliminate um, the duplication of effort. I guess uh, so, moving on to implementation. Um, change can be hard. Uh, many of our members and our staff have, been, have years of experience doing things a certain way. Uh, however, the staff took the new system without missing a beat. Uh, this is testament to their hard work and dedication to the town. The focus has always been on how the new system will increase the overall level of service for the town. One of the major pitfalls that was identified by other municipalities that have started an asset management system was trying to do too much too fast, making too many changes. For this reason, our focus, our, focus, our effort was on wastewater and sewer and drain assets. We created an asset inventory and started using the system for routine cleanings and inspections. The idea was to start small and slowly grow the number of ways the asset management platform is used. The, roll, the rollout went as smooth as we could have hoped for. For this reason, the service request and work order system has been extended to the highway department. TPW is adding more and more of the town's assets to the system, for example, street sign inventory, like Chris had mentioned. Uh, pieces of the system are complete. Um, the asset identification, asset naming, mapping. Other parts are being completed or being updated. Uh, condition assessment, risk assessment, et cetera. The town's been working with New Hampshire DES throughout the implementation. Uh, New Hampshire DES has attended the training. Um, the goal was to meet the core elements that, set, that were set by NHDES as an asset management system to qualify for principal loan forgiveness. Um, 
moving on to About People GIS. Uh, the platform is comprised of two main elements, the control panel and people forms. The control panel contains service requests, work orders, and asset mapping. Later in the presentation, I'm going to run through an example of how the control panel is used, if I can get the... Um, people forms is the second part, is a library containing thousands of forms. So what you can do is take these forms created by other users and they're shared. The forms can be pulled from the library and put onto our platform. An example would be a grease trap inspection form that is used by our wastewater treatment staff when they're inspecting restaurants throughout town. We pulled a base form from the library and then various sections were adjusted and added or deleted to create a form that better suited the town's specific needs. Um, it's a more efficient way than trying to create a form from scratch. Uh, this information is all in one place and accessible to all staff in the office and on tablets in the field. The system is map-based using GPS to associate field staff and their location with the adjacent assets. The asset management system is also tied into the assessing's data online server, so the system is automatically updated daily to capture changes that are made by the assessing department. The main reason for selecting PeopleJS was the core system aligned well with the town's goals. The desktop versus the tablet views make the system easy to use in the field and in the office, which on this picture here, um, it's showing you on the top uh, what it would look like on a desktop. Mm -hmm. And the picture on the bottom is what it looks like on our tablets. They're slightly different because you're using your finger versus using a mouse. Um, the, the important thing to, to uh, emphasize on that is that it's not just an office tool. It's a tool that we, the staff are active, actively using on a daily basis. In fact, last week, uh, the carpenter asked that uh, you know he, we could cut down on his paper workload if the, I can hear myself better than, it almost feels, it feels like I'm Let's hearing myself ring. At home, it's important. Yeah. Um, no, so the carpenter is now using a, uh, basically a little think pad. He gets his work orders on that uh, device. Um, he can check in and out. He can close his work orders. He can literally plan his day. Excellent. And um, it cuts down on someone having to chase him down to find him to, let's say, uh -huh. if the manager needed uh, something done here at the town hall, um, literally it can be sent to him electronically. He gets yeah. a notification. Um, all the catch basin cleanings that we've been doing this year, yeah. um, as they clean each catch basin, there's a, they actually fill the report out right there in the field. The good thing about that is, as we've talked repeatedly here, is we keep getting requested uh, federally on down to do more, uh, with, especially with stormwater management. And catch yeah. basin cleaning is one of those key em uh, efforts that they have us do. The good thing is when every year when we submit what's known as our MS4 report, we literally are going to get now the information that we need for this MS4 report right from this, from this asset management tool. So that documentation. was documentation, proof that we actually um, did what we said we were going to do from street sweeping to catch basin cleaning to leaf pickup to uh, tree removal and a host of other things. So it, we're, this isn't something that the taxpayers, well, that the state invested in and we're, we're looking at it and say, oh, it's nice and shiny and we put it up on the shelf. No, we're actually using it on a daily basis. Um, and I've even got people like Jim coming in and reminding me, hey, yeah, uh, you need to open up your uh, tree <laughs> warden section and look at the couple of things that I just sent you. Oh, okay. So it's even keeping those of us at the top um, in line and, if you will, um, uh, trying to do a better job. So, With the system, and uh, I may get into it if we get this up and running, um, the, there's a service request and a work order dashboard, and each of those can be configured so they show each foreman exactly what they want to okay. see. Um, it's color coded so Chris can have all of them open and see what's going on with highway, sewer and drain, the water treatment plant. Yeah. Um, because it, what, it did go so smooth, we created a highway department and put that included. Um, we added, tr a lot of the administration um, calls were 
for Chris as the tree warden. So we added another division just as tree warden. He has his own section and he can configure his dashboard to show trees that he needs to go look at and create work orders for the highway department through that. That document, Chris, what you took down, because you said you took down a number of trees already. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I keep track separately from year to year, have done for a while, um, the number of trees, where, what location, the reason why. Um, but more and more, oh, I took it out, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I thought that might have been part of the problem. And, um, but this is going to uh, allow me to stop doing that duplicate paperwork Good. trail Good. and uh, leave it simply on, uh, on uh, the um, asset management. Good thing, for instance, I've recently gotten calls, hey, how are you making out on, let's say, that was the trees that we took down on Jaunty Lane. If I literally go and pull up that work order, yes. the fact that I logged in the calls, because I'm dealing with three or four different vendors. I can know the vendor. I can know the, the last time I talked with someone, as long as you, you enter in the information, you can have it there at your fingertip. And that's the other thing is if um, there's repeated re problems in one particular area, um, we can actually look and see, for instance, let's say we were dealing with clogged drains. Uh, you can see if, okay, well, geez, like a year ago, we just up the street we had one, and two years ago, a quarter mile up the street, you'll, you'll see the patterns, and hopefully that kind of information will allow us to better utilize our staff, our labor, and do some pre good preventative maintenance that prevents these things from reoccurring. Mm -hmm. At least that's the hope. But uh, yeah. initially, we're still in the uh, developing the database side of it, good. and this is this is it literally live. Yep. So we're back up and running here. Um, so additionally, the system is extremely user-friendly and highly configurable. Uh, this allows the town to change, adjust and change as permits and permit compliance criteria also change. Exeter and Seabrook had both previously purchased the same platform, People GIS. Uh, this allows us to share strategies and avoid pitfalls. Um, I've been in contact with the person from Seabrook who's been running it for, I think, the last two years. and. Um, we get together at Seacoast Stormwater Coalition on a monthly basis and can talk about how we're doing, what we're doing. So next on, did you lose it again? Yep. Perfect. No, there it is. Um, you said the mouse is slow to respond. Gotcha. There we go. Uh, asset inventory. So um, this is a screenshot that I pulled from the system. I just asked it to give us a breakdown of all the assets that we have mapped. Um, each one is given a unique ID. So for outfalls, the SW stands for stormwater. That's so neat. stormwater outfall, there's 173 of them. Mm. Manholes, these are stormwater manholes, not sewer manholes. Culverts, catch basins, or stormwater inlets. So that's what the SWIN is, stormwater inlet. So you can see if, if you had to manage as part of our stormwater system 1,591 individual catch basins that need to be wow. cleaned, inspected, and y without having a computerized system, it pretty much makes it impossible. Um, then these other stormwater assets are the pipes. So the SWM is stormwater main. There are 1,947 individual pipes, wow. adding up to 193,000 plus linear feet of drain pipe. and. On this, uh, you can have it break down by material, mm -hmm. by pipe diameter, by any asset um, attribute of the asset. On this one here, I had to break it down by material type. Wow. Um, the, so once this is put in, we, it, it's given us an idea of which ones we know, which mm -hmm. ones we don't know. So there is that second one there is unknown. So it's 155 pieces of pipe that we know we're there, um, more than likely we know their diameter, we don't know the material that they are, um, which is something that we can then focus our attention mm -hmm. on those, yeah. find out what they are, that way we can get a life cycle of how long they're gonna, yeah. they can be in service. Um, the next section we'll be talking about is asset mapping. Um, this is showing, uh, the yellow lines on there are drains, um, the yellow squares are catch basins, and 
some of them have had inspections, some have been cleaned. Um, if they have a purple square around them, they're on the cleaning list. And if they don't have a purple square around them, I mean they're, they're recently cleaned. The green lines on there are, are sewer. Yeah. Um, and you can have these, I can change it instead of having them all yellow, you can have them based on individual material types. You can see each, each pipe segment. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit easier if, if you don't need to know, if you just need to know where they are, mm -hmm. to break them down by yellow and green, and then they know, sewer and drain department knows mm -hmm. which ones are sewer, which ones yeah. are drain. Uh, the next item we'll talk about is uh, communication. Um, the internal communication is important to ensure the staff stays trained and is informed of why we are doing what we are doing, uh, the benefits to the town, and the expectations from the residents. External communication, um, this is our call taker, Susan. Um, she, on a daily basis, multiple times, lets people know that everything they're calling is being recorded and put in the system. Uh, the more information people give us, the more we can put in there. Um, and as soon as people, she has it up on her computer all the time. And if somebody calls and says their name's John Doe, she'll type in John Doe. You can search for any term, anything, their road. If they say they're on Mill Road, she can say John and put in Mill Road. And it will come up before they even get to it. She can say, are you calling about the catch basin that's wow. clogged at the end of your driveway? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, yep. And you'll say, I have your call from Friday. Um, the foreman's looked into it and has created a work order. We either need a part. It's on the list. We can, for, if they want to call back, we can send the foreman a notification. Mm -hmm. They'll get in touch with them. But the communication side of this has been great. Um, the foreman can reference asset management when they're talking to residents, when people are calling about and need to know when the last time a catch basin was cleaned, um, when, you, when did I put that call in, when, did, when, you, when was the last time it was inspected. Additionally, asset management is going to come up, I'm sure, many times when Chris and Jen are here talking to you guys about the budgeting process and capital improvement yeah. because it's going to allow us with the, all these inspections and conditions, we can, they can better plan and forecast. Uh, level of service is, the, is a huge part of this asset management. This is what we do, how we do it, when and how often we do it, and how money is spent. Level of service is determined by resident expectation and what is required by regulators. An example of a level of service when it comes to permit compliance would be um, something that I'm going to run through at the end of the presentation. I'll be going through an example involving a catch basin cleaning. This is one of the requirements covered under the MS4 permit. The MS4 permit is a stormwater discharge permit through the EPA that recently went through a major overhaul change in requirements. The required level of service for this would be that sumps within catch basins are kept below 50%. Previously, the town's been cleaning catch basins on a rotating basis. Um, this will continue as the first step as every basin is cleaned, um, happening over a series of years. Every time a catch basin is cleaned, there'll be a cleaning form filled out with an inspection form. This data is collected, and the goal is to create a catch basin cleaning list so that we know which catch basins need to be cleaned and they're identified. Um, basically, there are catch basins that are higher or lower on the road. Some of them collect leaves more. Some yeah. of them, the water runs, just water runs in, the leaves run past. And there's no, with 1,500 plus yeah. to identify, there's, there's ones down the beach that we know need to be cleaned every year because of the sand. Yeah. Um, but throughout town, this will give us a much better idea of where to focus our attention. Okay. And it takes almost as much time to clean a basin that's 10% full as 100% yeah. full. Yeah. The guys have to set up the truck, set up cones, get everything in place. The actual vacuuming of, of the basin, how much material comes out, doesn't vary. So if they're <laughs> spending time on something that doesn't need to be cleaned, and we can get them only cleaning those basins that really need it, it's really going to help with our efficiency. Uh, I'm using catch basins for this example, but the same principles apply to pretty much all the assets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but I don't want to spend eight hours going through every. Uh. So the next one I'm going to be talking about is calculating risk. This chart um, is a risk chart for critical assets. 
There's a matrix put on here of probability of failure versus consequence of failure. So assets are prioritized based on condition assessment and criticality. And the idea is to focus on this top right box. Um, the lower left box is low risk, low probability of failure, low consequence of failure. But if there's a high probability of failure and there's mm -hmm. a extra, uh, high consequence of failure, items that fall into that box is where you really want to be focusing your attention. Here, Jim. Sure. Um, that particular chart that you're seeing on the on the screen is blank, and only because the the next steps that we're going to be taking is literally uh, determining what the risk factors are. There are charts for us. There's guideline documentation. Essentially, all the assets have to be um, rated, and then um, part of the risk is um, determining in the event of, let's say, a, if a catch basin were to plug, you know, what yeah. who's impacted. Literally, like who's flooded out, um, but you know we, we've kind of touched on this in the in the past, and um, when we've had discussions about the force main, and what was you know what is risk with that, and what is um, criticality, and the other thing is what is the consequence, and um, hopefully in the future once um, risk um, condition those things are put in with all the assets, we'll be able actually to spend our time and our money working on the things, on the items that end up in the far right corner, the high risk items, to lower them, to get them, you know, we want, we really want these things in the other four corners of our operating realm. We really don't want or, or shouldn't allow things to get um, right up into the high risk areas because that's when we face issues like what we're facing today. Yeah. That's all. So that's the, if the, if the main part of this. So now that James has got a lot of the um, uh, meat, if you will, into the, the data part of the system, this is, after tonight's meeting, this is gonna be the, the winter work and the, and the future work. He and I and Jennifer and, and staff working together to determine these things and mm -hmm. basically assign risk. And so that when we do come before the board in the future for, uh, through a budget process, Hopefully we've got this information in hand and can back up uh, why we need to do what we need to do. That's all. When did you start this whole program? Oh, about a year ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and to be honest with you, it started years earlier than that when, um, you know, for years we've been working on it um, to uh, locate all of our assets, our manholes. I know when yeah. Keith was here we had I think we paid $10,000. We had someone go out and verify the location of all the sewer manholes, catch basins, drain manholes, anything that didn't move on the street, they located it. And um, so we built up our database, if you will, or our mapping portion first. Mm -hmm. But then to, to actually bring it to the next level, it takes this piece of software where we're taking maps and information and blending, Excellent. bringing them both together to start making some smarter decisions. Excellent. All right, go ahead. Yeah, and the idea behind this is there's a lot of subjectivity. Um, mo a lot of times people can agree maybe on the consequence of failure. Something is, it has no consequence or something's really gonna cause a problem. Um, the probability of failure can be more subjective and our idea is to try to put as much data behind it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then it can differentiate between the parts that are subjective and the parts that are concrete. We can define them. Um, so talking about the probability of failure, um, there's really three ways you can look into the probability. Um, one could be looking at condition um, to determine the likelihood of failure um, and see how that equates to our level of service. That's what the LOS evaluation is on here. Um, another way, if you, if you can't do a condition assessment on it, is to look at an expected lifespan and compare that also with the capacity. So as new neighborhoods are brought on, um, if, say, we're at 100% capacity and it's meeting our current level of Sanders level of service, in order for new neighborhoods to be added in that area, upgrades would have to be made or level service would be limited. Um, then talking about the consequences of failure, um, it 
rating them, there's there's really four different criteria that we would look at, and one would be health and health and safety environment. The next would be level of service. Then comparing the other two categories, which are doing repairs versus doing replacement, and how that impacts level of service, how the impact on the budget for repairs, the, imp the, the yeah. impact on the budget for replacement. And using all these things together can give you one number that yeah. you can put on. It's just another tool and that we can be using. Um, so moving on to budgeting for maintenance and capital improvement. Okay. Identifying funding strategy based on the analysis that we've done for life cycle costs. Organizing the information to get a better picture of the assets. Maintenance costs, the asset management system provides a way to collect and then systematically analyze the data. Yeah. The collection of the data is really key yeah. um, through, the, through the tablets in the field. This becomes the background information to justify funding required for long-term planning and replacement of assets. Defines the ways the budget line items could be adjusted to better align with our operation and maintenance costs. Another thing to, to realize uh, on the budgeting side is um, the reason why the state is supporting this is any future um, SRF uh, sewer grant matching monies, uh, any of the federal monies, um, they're going to be looking for, they're going to be requiring communities to have had and be doing an asset management program so that they they realize that the federal dollars and state dollars are they're being for being directed at really the most critical uh, infrastructure yeah. in each community. Yeah. And so I'm going to run through what um, a typical, I may go through this quick. If you have questions, yeah. let me know. But this is up on Susan's desk um, on her computer as soon as she comes in in the morning. And this is a service request set up. Oh and so um, if Chris was to ask her to do something, it would go in from an internal. Go with patron and, and put so, in Mary Louise. So uh, we'll go, there's a patron here, yeah. and um, she's calling from, as we type it in, well, it'll automatically there. tell you where, um, it'll pre-populate the road. So she's here at One Cunnet Road, and she's at 100 One Cunnet Road. So it'll bring us on the map, and it'll automatically wow. center on the parcel. Oh, that's neat with this dot, um, at which time she could say, I was walking to my car and uh, there was a puddle. It doesn't seem like the catch basin's working. Um, with the system, Susan can now see all the catch basins and she'll say, where, you know, where was your car? Well, I was parked out back by the garage. So she can see it's that catch basin there. So she can click on the circle and put it on the catch basin. Now, when the service request is submitted into the system, the foreman knows exactly which catch basin out of all these catch basins around that the complaint is coming in. So we'd select a division, it would be sewer and drain, wow. and they'd want a catch basin. There's a pre-populated yeah. list for every department. We That's would put in that a catch basin inspection was requested. Um, typically, it's Susan that's getting these calls. In this case, it could be me. Um, I would call this a high priority in that if the catch basin's back there flooded, the whole back and flood IT could be flooded. Yeah. So we'd put it in as a high. It automatically populates the date. Um, you can backdate it. If we got a call on Saturday and have a voicemail, we can put it in from when, wow. the, when the, the service request came in. How it came in, um, they either walked into the office, phone call, email. The, we can put in the patron's name if they want to give it. If they don't want to give it, it's fine. It's just more information that we can put in the system. It allows us to notify them also by email or by phone if they want to follow up for, um, especially if they're not sure. Down the beach, there are a lot of catch basins that are owned by the state. Um, if they say that catch basin's a problem, our sewer and drain foreman looks into it and it's a state drain. If it's right by their house, they'd like to know that. That way the next time they call, they just call the state directly and they don't call us. Um, so that's basically um, really only a few clicks that she'll put in the address and who it was, at which point she'll submit it. And it goes into our system. The highway foreman will um, keep this dashboard 
So on the top here, we have our service requests that we're putting in. We have a service request dashboard. That's good. So um, yeah. I just added that 31 link deal as I was yeah. setting up the system earlier. Um, so you can see here this 100 Winnicott Road. It's one day old. It's from today. It's service request 364. Um, this would automatically pop up on the foreman's tablet in the field. Um, so Toby Spainhauer, our, our sewer and drain foreman, would get this, see the basin. He could come out here and he could determine, is it just a trash bag that's sitting over it that's stopping the drain from working and he can pull it off himself? Or is it something that he needs to allocate personnel, yeah. get the vac truck? So he would come to this decision section and say, is a work order required? And he'd say yes. And he'd say it was him, and he'd generate the work order. That's amazing. Um, at which point, the work order goes into our dashboard here. Wow. So. <clears throat> that is quickly, I mean, very quickly to show you. And that was part of, partly the, one of the reasons why we chose this particular vendor was um, this, the ease with which the software is used, um, short training time, and, and I think we made the right decision because we've seen a, a number of staff that I didn't even know if they knew how to send texts or, or emails, and people have gravitated to it 100% um, stronger than I thought they would. I thought there might be some reluctance, you know, we've always done it with a form, that type of thing, but no, they couldn't be happier. Um, and, um, and that's why it's getting rolled out now to other divisions, other sections, so that other people can use it. With that, and so um, with that, it can come in. The, this dashboard would go to the, the staff that are working on it. They could open up, this is another work order, um, and he can assign it to personnel. In this case, he assigned it to David Jones. They, when they get it when they start to work on it they can log into the system say that it's in progress they can put it on hold um, or they can complete it at which point um, it gets logged into our system as being done um, with this i can just uh, we have a little identify tool here so i can highlight that asset when they're out there doing the cleaning they would do this on the tablet yep. uh, when i pull that up it gives us the parcel which we're tied into assessing, so the CAMA data. Um, we have the gravity drains, drains. We have every service request that was put in, which is the one we just did, um, down here on the bottom. So when you highlight an area, it'll tell you the whole history of it. Pictures that were taken, everything's tied in. Um, so in this situation, they would be looking at um, the storm model inlet 1469, which is the one in the back corner there. And when they open that up, it gives them all the information here in the corner. They can pull up the people form. Yep. This looks slightly different on the tablet than it does here. Um, here's the map. You can close the map. This is one form where they are doing the cleaning and the inspection. They clean it, yeah. and once it's clean, they have a good picture. They can see everything inside. Um, for this particular inlet, there hasn't been uh, a lot of data collected on it. So they could say who owns it, if it's a private state or town. These things, once you've answered them once, they don't come up on the form the next time. Um, that way they can add an inlet inspection. They can generate a work order if they find some damage, missing brick, something they can't take mm -hmm. care of on the spot. That would kick it back to the foreman to let him know, because the first time the foreman went out, the thing was full of water and full of leaves and grass. Okay. Um, they can get structure details and um, I was going to close down with uh, questions. Uh, see if you guys. Chris, no. Chris, I'm at the risk of getting a lot of people upset. You have the most complicated job in town. It's multifaceted. And I wouldn't say complicated. I'm but hoping. Well, you've got a million different things pulling yeah. at you all the time, and, and it's uh, it's an amazing system that you have to keep going. I hope this lowers the ulcer rate. 
in public works. But it's staggering when you look at the whole picture of what you have to do and all the minutiae and this little pipe and this little uh, whatever that needs to be cleaned out. Uh, a great idea. It's nice to see that you have this and you're using it. And hopefully this will lower a little stress and give you a lot better way to keep track of everything and document everything. And this, as you said, now this can help you in future um, grants and so forth. Yeah, definitely grant applications, budgeting yeah. process, um, yeah. federal reporting requirements, all, all those things. And yeah. certainly I, um, it, we have to say an extreme vote of thanks to the um, one, uh, because it was a Warren article to accept the $60,000. Yeah. Uh, taxpayers uh, supported it. I didn't realize it. that was um, going to be this. Yeah, and, and then on top of that, the board, you know, uh, literally supporting us. I mean, it, it might have seemed like uh, I was rubbing the lamp a little too hard <laughs> when I said that, you know, when Jennifer and I sat here and said, oh, we're gonna, we could get, be given 60000 by the state to implement this system and literally... Um, uh, we've uh, we've done that, and um, and so it is. It's a great tool, and, and for that, yes, I am thankful. The department's thankful for that. I didn't. One thing I did not see, I didn't see any red listed bridges. Yes. Can we have some questions, please? You have any? Yeah, I have a question. Um, you stated that your main focus is on wastewater and sewer and drain assets right now. Yep. But how much of the public works assets do you actually have logged into that? We have pretty much the entire sign inventory. I'd say 90 plus percent. Um, we have uh, and we have our roads. We're getting road conditions added in slowly um, because the focus, like I said, that we did what came up as Chris was saying, this has been about a two-year process. The first year had us going to different workshops, looking yeah. at all the different systems. And what was universal was people trying to do too much too okay. fast. Um, and for that reason, we, f we focused on sewer and drain and the wastewater side of it. Um, and this grant had to do with what they call horizontal mm -hmm. assets. Um, there's a s whole separate part of this system for vertical assets, which are inside a catch, inside a say a pump station, okay. each and because this is all map based, so uh, there's only one asset at. If I pull up the map, there's only one asset at this. It's a yeah. catch basin. There's a pipe there. But if I was to go to a pump station, the pump station has individual pumps, individual pieces of equipment within there, all with their own belts. And if you tie the vertical assets, which are all in one spot. And it will let you have a similar situation where you could click on the different parts of inside a pump station and be able to get know the make, model, size oh of all God. the belts, pieces, and parts that they need to maintain. Um, we, st we started with sewer and drain and the road section yeah. because they were the, I won't say the most straightforward. The other thing is I didn't want to cause ulcers for my wastewater staff when at the same time we were doing this, we were discussing the facility study and yeah. coming up with a bond. So yeah. they, they have their hands full and their minds full at the moment with, with that particular project. So this will be um, blended into their scope of work as yeah. things come along, especially as the new things get implemented. Those assets will be added into the into this system and it'll start generating, if you will, the maintenance work orders for them wow. also really Amazing. for the whole department. Absolutely. I see, you know, maybe five years total to get everything into it. Oh my God. And, and I, but beyond that, I don't think we're ever really going to be done. We're always going to be yeah. improving it, updating it, refining the information uh, and our ability to use it. Amazing. So. I think it's very impressive. Impressive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Really well, I think it's very impressive too. So um, will there be, there'll be things in the future that will be added to it? Yes. Uh, you know, updates. Yep. And um, will we be getting uh, money from the state or anything for things like that? Today? It'll ensure that we get money from the state. Um, in other words, the the sixty thousand was you know thirty of it was thirty or forty was in software. 
the other parts of it were in the, the laptops and the, the training and uh, phone service, et cetera. Um, I'm not sure we'll get other money to f for the asset portion, but it'll allow us to get other money for uh, sewer and drain, uh, uh, sewer line replacement, yeah. uh, wastewater treatment plant upgrades. Uh, Does the state have a things. system similar to this? They are. They're, they're, they're finally. <laughs> that was one of the first questions that I asked and also asked when it came to the MS4 program. Does, does the state and the federal government also have to comply with their own rules <laughs> with respect to, let's say, the catch basins along Route 1A? I got from... Yeah, because I think mine are on hold. Just yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like but from, from Newton there. Tedder, who was with the EPA, he said, yes, most definitely. And, I, and I've noticed a huge uptick from DOT in cleaning catch basins that I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got their own truck now, where well, I don't they think they are own faster, them. I will have to say that. Yep. Yeah. So, so no, we're all you. having to do it. Well, yeah, the, number of, the number of towns that are on an asset management system has grown astro uh, asymptotically over the last few years and that um, we're really getting yeah. into 2018 um, and getting uh, a system that will allow us to modify and keep with, I know Chris is, we talk about different assets and how they'll be added because when you're talking about the volume of assets, um, yeah. if it comes to stop sign reflectivity yeah. is something that's on out in the future where um, you're going to be holding a light in front of a, a stop sign to see how much light comes back. All those reports get directly tied to an asset right that's in here. Point. And there's really no other, you have to have a computer, computerized system that can do it. Um, and we've, yeah. we're right in, do we have that right now? No, but we're implementing the... Uh... Thank you. Thank I'd you. like to ask about this letter that's sure. right here. Do you know the one it is? I about, uh, you received it on the um, 23rd of September, and it's about, good evening, Mr. Jacobs. After a couple of months, I was pleased that the Department of Public Works was able to follow through with the painting of no parking on M Street. Yeah. So what's that about? When we went down initially, if you looked at the structures and where the driveways were, um, it would appear that there wasn't enough room to have a parking space. So we painted it as no parking. Further information was provided by the neighbors, and in including the gentleman whose house in front of, mm -hmm. come to find out the neighbor to the right has paved onto, they've paved more than what they literally own. And but so if you use the property line as the demarcation mm -hmm. for the parking space mm -hmm. there's adequate room so we've gone back and reinstated that one particular parking space mm -hmm. um, so in this particular case um, the information we got right off the bat was was half the story but the rest of the story is the space stays Good. so it, it was all done by the time you get to the end of the letter uh, you know the lady it says something about it was spray painted back again, or? Mm -hmm. James, James actually handled 90% of it. As a matter of fact, he communicated with her last Friday, sending her the plans, uh, the aerial photographs that we marked up, all okay. that, the supporting documentation to say that the space needed to stay. Mm -hmm. So she understands all of that? I, I would, I believe so. Yeah, I hope okay. so. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Yes. Chipman, just while Chris is here, um, we got this in our box, Notice of Intent for coverage, in, coverage Under Small MS4 General Permit. Right. So everything that you're doing with this stormwater is to... Not everything get, that we're doing, but, but yes, that, that, that is some. So um, one of the requirements with the MS4 is, like I had brought up, was the, the example of the catch basin cleaning. Um, they had gone through many iterations of what they wanted to have as their limit of ser level of service. Um, the original was every catch basin being cleaned every year. Okay. Um, they got a lot of pushback on that. We have we do not clean 1,500 plus <laughs> a year. Um, so they decided to have, settle on a level of service of 50% full in the sumps with mm -hmm. them. Though. Um, which, so there's basically, there's some, some catch basins are gonna need to be cleaned every year. Some may go 10 years. Um, until we are collecting data, so uh, once we know, um, we'll better be able to see what it's going to take, how many catch basins have to be cleaned every year to keep that level of service at 50%. That's just one of the 
right. um, there within that MS that that notice of intent um, through EPA um, has many different items. Uh, I can go over any of yeah. them if you want, but a lot of them are public outreach um, and going to different audiences, okay. talking to industry. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. gentlemen. Yep. Thank you. Amazing. Absolutely. Next, we invited our state senator and our representatives to come up. Where did Phil go? He's in the back. Yeah. And I would like to ask that um, Dr. Sherman, who is on two of these uh, commissions, I'll be also be allowed. I talked to Phil, and he said he thought it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I mean, Dr. Sherman, you want to join the crowd up here? Good. Mark can join us to talk about the lawsuit. Whoops. <laughs> He's I'll step there. back, Mr. Chair. Oh, I, I added as item C, legislative actions. Okay. And I'll let the uh, other people talk. About okay. This. No, we had, we had asked, you know, about the Coakley thing, and we want to make sure all our reps were invited. So when you get to C, I'll step back. In. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Sure, yeah. I wouldn't. Well, I just wanted the, the first item is on the result of the Coakley uh, Landfill Group Right to Know Law suit. Um, and I, at the outset, I just want to thank the, this board um, for the leadership that it has demonstrated on this issue. The, you know, I know that the board is the first to raise the issue with the Coakley Landfill Group about publicly attending the meeting, and they were told that those meetings were not open. Um, and I'm glad that you know Mark Gerald has played a really important role. I know that we were that the five of us who brought the right to know lawsuit. Um, you know, were we were optimistic that we were entitled to the information that it is a, the Coca Landfill Group is a public body. But having the town of Hampton join in with us and having Mark's expert legal um, skills put to work, I think, were very crucial in having you know, Judge Delker's decision come down in our favor. And I just want to acknowledge his great work and thank the board. And also just, I couldn't help but think that this question of raising um, the right to the public to know what its government <laughs> is doing with government funds um, in many ways harkens right back to uh, a previous lawsuit that involved the firefighters trying to get information about how the the, the, the health trust operated. Yeah. Um, so you, you can see like a direct line of cases be from this original case about the Housing Finance Authority to the professional firefighters of New Hampshire and now this one involving the Coakley Landfill Group. And it's, you know, we're lucky that, I'm fortunate that the court found rightly that under the Constitution of the State of New Hampshire and under the right to know law, the public has a right to know what public officials are doing with public money. Um, and that was a, you know, that was a, it was a very powerful decision. Um, and again, I want to I thank the board for its role. And I also just might add parenthetically, there is a possibility this case could get appealed to the Supreme Court, depending what the city of Portsmouth wants to do. But it might be uh, useful if the board would like to have it entertain the possibility of sending a letter to the, their counterparts at the city, Portsmouth City Council, urging them not to f throw away further public funds um, fighting a lawsuit that ultimately is, um, should be resolved in favor of the right to know. Okay, anybody else? Huh? Thank you, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Board members, uh, great to see you. Uh, I would, uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, each and every member of your board, and we've all served together, yeah, including Mr. Welch and Mr. Sullivan, particularly Mr. Uh, Gerald in this, in this effort. And he has spearheaded this, and of course, uh, um, under Rady, Rainey's guidance and, and Minnie Mesmer. But each and every one of you that sit on this board are to be commended, and, and all of you have sat as chair or will sit as chair, um, and you've done a, a fabulous job. Mark Gerald um, has done an extraordinary job in leading this issue with the town manager and the board for years. Uh, this this uh, decision 
um, is transcendent. Uh, it's precedent setting, not only in this case, but for other tort actions that this town uh, may consider in the future, mm -hmm. yeah. is engaged in now. The order itself speaks to the talisman, uh, that, that magical quality, and this indeed uh, is such. Uh, there were various proclamations about winning, we won, and uh, the town of Hampton didn't win. The town of Hampton led this. Uh, those that sought to defy the rights under the New Hampshire Constitution, those that sought to violate the explicit and implicit meaning of 91A lost. And they have attacked people that have uh, sought to use a co-equal branch of government, which is the court system, which is every bit as legitimate as your meetings, which is every bit as legitimate as the legislative body and the executive body, the governor's body, uh, and uh, for those that want to uh, stifle and stemmy and attack people that want to use a co-equal branch of government, uh, there was no victory here. Those people simply lost. I'd like to um, uh, expound uh, on your September 11th, 2017 meeting uh, here. Mr. Waddell is the chairman. And on page 12 of 13 in the minutes, Selectman Barnes motion to approve town council. Mr. Gerald is authorized for such proceedings that are necessary to ensure that the meetings of the EPA, the New Hampshire DES, and the CLG are open to the public and are conducted at a location in the Seacoast area. So one year post that motion, that was unanimous five zip, uh, the state of New Hampshire judicial branch, superior court notice of decision, Case name Minnie Messmer et al. v. Coakley Landfill Group, 218 218 CV 00316. It's Judge Delker, um, who may hear more of your, your tort uh, um, enterprising uh, efforts, uh, speaks about actions going forward, and there's implicit and explicit uh, responsibilities for the town in terms of, of this CLG in their losing attempt to shut down debate in terms of this town's access to records, this town's attendance at meetings, uh, this town's acceptance in being served notice of meetings. Uh, there will be no more privacy in this. And additionally, this uh, reference decision that came out one year after Selectman Barnes's uh, motion uh, talks about costs. And I would encourage the town, uh, of course, the, the decision says you cannot um, recoup legal expenses, but any cost you've incurred, right down to a paper clip. Uh, I would, uh, as a, a citizen, a taxpayer, a former member of your body, and a, a taxpayer, um, insist that uh, in compliance with the law, that any costs we have uh, incurred um, be uh, reimbursed. And the importance of this is accordingly, this request is moved. The CLG is required prospectively to comply with RSA 91A and other re relevant provisions relating to the productions of minutes and records. So again, uh, there was no there was no uh, victory here. There was no um, cause for celebration. It's simply the administration of good government. And, and this board here and Attorney Gerald deserve the ultimate kudos. And this is the law that the CLG uh, for years with this Coakley Landfill Group, and I want to read it because it's important, yeah. and this is what they thwarted. This is Title VI. This is New Hampshire state law. And this town has always upheld this to the very highest level. Public offers, officers and employees, Chapter 91A, access to government records and meetings. Preamble, openness in the conduct of public business is essential to a democratic society. The purpose of this chapter is to ensure both the greatest possible public access to the actions, discussions, and records of all public bodies and their accountability to the people. There's nothing more fundamental than that in, in this country. There's nothing more important. And uh, congratulations again to you, to the board. Uh, as we look for this last year, I'll, I'll just reference some quick source documents. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, attorney Gerald um, had uh, Attorney Sullivan before the board many times. Uh, and they simply said that we had no right to do that. Um, as they testified uh, this summer, 
the uh, defendant's attorney, Young, simply said, unfortunately for the town of Hampton, <laughs> Mark's position is simply not the law. And of course, now uh, she's completely incorrect. And it is the law. And Mark Gerald and uh, attorney Toomey, who conducted and provided his services pro bono, pro bono thanks to Rainey, uh, they've been squashed. And they lost. Uh, Northampton, there was. Uh, in April 30th, 2018, Northampton wants nothing to do with the Coakley lawsuit. Vice Chairman at this time, Miller, Selectman Miller from Northampton, uh, an officer, uh, an elected official from a PRP, it's Northampton, Newington, and Portsmouth, said uh, they wanted nothing to do with the suit. Um, he expressed uh, extreme confidence in those that violated 91A. So to Mr. Miller from Northampton, uh, uh, an elected leader for a PRP, he was another loser in this decision. Uh, and now they must comply with the rule of law. Uh, and we'll go on about the public utilities commissions, um, the, the health effects. Uh, the, this, these folks that are here, Mike Edgar, uh, Dr. Sherman, have done extraordinary work up there on the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission. Uh, there have been attempts to politicize that. There have been people appointed by um, partisan groups that have been removed the first day. Uh, and it's been unsightly and, and unseemly. But Dr. Sherman, uh, Representative Edgar, um, and Representative Cushing, Mark Gerald, and you have done an extraordinary job. And I, and I congratulate each and every one of you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <coughs> I also want to note that Henry Marsh and Jim Splain were the other citizen plaintiffs on this. Okay. So, so may I ask a quick question, gentlemen? Have the um, uh, Residents in Northampton and Rye and Portsmouth and whatever been notified, are they aware of the outcome of this suit? Because their residents should know that they didn't perhaps receive adequate representation. If, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and, and uh, fellow members and, and public servants, is that um, uh, I didn't see this decision on the town website. Um, and I know you're going to get it on the town website. It may be there somewhere, but I scoured it today and perhaps um, uh, publicity through the press. Um, yes, Mr. I can answer as RISE representative yeah. to the Coakley Landfill Commission. Mm -hmm. We're meeting on October 10th, and I will be reporting Excellent. that results plus this new um, update. Good to the select board in Rye. And I've also been meeting with the Greenland select board to keep them up to date as well. Okay, and are there other areas in the state of New Hampshire, do you know, that have a similar problem and might be taking action on it? I, there, may, there may be other um, places where you have a, you know, a municipality that is the, a prime Contamination. contaminator and you know has entered into a mm -hmm. you know a hybrid organization where just because you partner with a hybrid organization does not mean that you no longer are performing a, an essential public function that involves the health and safety of the community and public funds um, the the groundbreaking part of the decision or one of the groundbreaking things is where the judge found that you know cleaning up and protecting the environment was an essential government okay. function. And therefore, when the government is getting involved in that essential government function and using government funds, it becomes subject to the right to know law, that the people have a right to know what the government is doing in its name. It looks like this is spreading across the country because I'm seeing more and more in the news of people acting on the you know, clean water and mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Bean, would you be kind enough to introduce the nice gentleman to your right because I don't know him. I'm so sorry. Um, good evening, uh, Chairman and Board Members. My name is Doug Pilardi, and I'm here um, sitting in for Dan Ennis, who is in Washington oh, D.C. at a um, board meeting today. Oh. So um, he really wanted to be here, but clearly yeah. couldn't. And <coughs> this was a year in the making. The um, eventies got there, so. Um, I'm here taking notes, and I'm happy to pass anything on to the senator if you um, have any direct Excellent. you know, questions or concerns for him. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. If I see an thank unfamiliar you. face, I'm nosy. Okay, I was going to jump in, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to add quickly, I wanted to you know, thank the board for uh, pro providing the services of the great attorney who, uh, along with, uh, I don't know the names are mentioned, but uh, Paul Toomey, who, who worked with mm -hmm. us, uh, between the two of them, uh, the job they did was, was amazing. 
and I think also the results of it of, of opening the meetings to us and we have to go through and, and look at all the other aspects of uh, of the right to know law or between uh, their budgets and everything else uh, what we're going to get access to better is should really make it so that we can uh, in, in a sense know what's going on a lot better and hopefully get some results in some of the actions we want to have have taken to clean things up yes. um, that that's that's what this uh, ruling is, is opening up and, uh, and and we're really hoping and, and so there might be more uh, additional uh, actions that we have to take aggressively in court possibly if we get stonewalled in some of these uh, other activities that are other aspects of the of the right to know law that, that we need access mm -hmm. to so again I wanted to thank you all for, for what you did and that uh, fight might uh, not be over yet, but the ultimate is is to get things cleaned up. Yep. Anything else for you? Yeah. I was just going to answer your question. There are uh, many Superfund sites throughout our state. Oh, yes. So CLG was formed as a response to the Superfund process. Right. So it would make sense that there are other bodies similar to CLG across the state mm -hmm. that will now be subject to this legal action. I, sure, just one more quick question. Um, our local water company, Aquarian, mm -hmm. has been providing us with um, uh, information on the PFOAs that's testing the water and all that. Can, do you have any idea whether other, there have got to be other water supply companies across the state of New Hampshire? I wonder if they are doing the same thing that John Hurley is doing at Aquarian and mm -hmm. giving updates to the public on what they're finding, the PFOAs and all the other stuff in the water. I know that, any, any idea? I know that now um, a number of municipal, municipally owned water companies yeah. are testing for PFOAs because it's become so prevalent. Um, yeah. I know, for instance, in, in Merrimack, they're very concerned about ah. the contamination that's come as a result of you know, St. Gobain's. Um, yes. It's a very, it's a complicated and it's a, a widespread problem. I thought it was interesting that, you know, the aquarium said that, that this was the first, first of the water systems that they had throughout <coughs> New England where they had to deal with PFCs and PFAs. Right. And that's a, you know, that's a, an unfortunate situation. But and, and I would say, um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, thank you, Rennie, is um, uh, Mindy Mesmer, uh, who yes. uh, hasn't been that uh, widely proclaimed this evening, uh, she was extraordinary in her legislative yes. prowess uh, in this last session. She was one term. She sought the uh, first congressional district uh, for the Democrats, and she is a tremendous valued public servant. She's on that Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission. Yep. She has spearheaded that. Uh, and quite frankly, Mr. Chairman, your board and, and all of you were, were, and Mr. Gerard were great reinforcers of the effort in Concord. And, and, and it is really noticed. And uh, there's pushback on it. Uh, it ties, but that pushback is being minimized with precedent and law uh, and your forcefulness. And um, I, w I wanted to recognize her, and I know everyone did here. And then uh, in terms of going forward, Mr. Chairman, I don't know what your, your protocol is for the, for the rest of the agenda, but there is that uh, meeting on the 10th, and I, I did have a couple of words for that at your, at your lecture. I've got, got a question here first from Mark for you guys now. Later. Yeah, actually, I just want to one thank all the state yeah. reps, uh, Representative Bean, Cushing, yeah. Edgar, uh, Mindy Mesmer, yeah. and she actually just sent something in a little while ago about what was going on in Merrimack, right, and how it relates to SB yes. 309. Yes, and as far as PFAS contamination, I went to a conference and it's everywhere. Yep, I want to say Aquarian's probably the only private water company that is doing as much as they're doing with it right now. Right, but I think that is definitely going to change, and. Thank you, Attorney Gerald. You did an excellent job. And I think that um, the push that you guys gave in Concord yeah. shows what happens when you uh, don't succumb to the status quo, because the status quo can be very comfortable. But as we see that if we fight for what we really need and what we want, we Thanks. might just be able to get it. And I'd be willing to support anything if, it's, if we can talk yep. to Council first about it as far as uh, yes. maybe a letter to the Portsmouth City Council and anything else yeah. that we can do to uh, show our support for our reps that have been working on this. Absolutely. So if I need a motion for that, I'd like yeah. to make it. Yeah, um, I would also like to uh, support that um, about writing the letter. Um, and, um, you know, I would second that motion. And I'd like to thank Dr. Tom Sherman, who is a member of two of the commissions 
and you've attended most of the meetings. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. It's nothing <laughs> like bringing science into it. And uh, your medical history, you know, studies, I'm sure, have added you know, a lot of understanding to people, and we appreciate everything that you've been able to do. And um, I've been following all of the um, progress it's been doing, and I've, you've been right there at the front forefront. I appreciate it. So it sounds like you want to make a motion? And I would I'll like to make a motion from our, what our rep one of, I think, Representative Cushing. I, yes, I, I simply I, I think that's an excellent yes. idea, and I think I we should too. do that. So I have a motion and a second. To write a yeah. letter to the city of Portsmouth. Portsmouth. To, you know, mm -hmm. the city council. Encourage them to yeah. move yeah. on. And yeah. Yeah. I'm voting Maybe, yes. Uh, the board is selected to the city council. Some, uh, some, in, some input for sure. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Excellent. Okay. So we have the... Seacoast Cancer Cluster update. Is there anything else you guys want to bring up on that while you look? I, I would like to share the, uh, the uh, date um, uh, for the town and for your board, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Wednesday, 10 October, the Commission on the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Investigation, RSA 126 Alpha colon 74, room 205 in the Legislative Office Building. It's at 10 a.m. It's the regular meeting. I would commend Dr. Sherman, as uh, Selectman Griffin so aptly describes, to be a stalwart leader in that. His attendance, mm -hmm. his enthusiasm, his technical and medical skill has been uh, extraordinary. And he works very well with the uh, medical professionals and sciences, uh, scientists on that commission. We had previously um, uh, sent uh, some recommendations. We're wrapping up for an interim report, and uh, Attorney Gerald has forwarded <coughs> um, that some of us have, have uh, put forth as recommendations. If you could review that, uh, perhaps uh, with your leadership, Mr. Chairman, the town manager, and Mark Gerald, the board could uh, endorse some of those uh, that will actually affect legislation and affect personnel and protect our water supply. But that is uh, coming up on the 10th, and I think it's uh, important that the town is represented there and actually scheduled on the agenda with important cogent scientific remarks, Good. especially in light of this uh, um, uh, recent court ruling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Thank I'm going to leave so Mark my, yeah, my, my recollection of the meeting as we left it, <laughs> Phil, was that we were to... Um, to ask the town to have a presence there Absolutely. at 10 10. Yeah. So that's ten, at the cancer cluster. Before you guys all break up and go off, is there any other thing you guys want to bring up for legislation wise? As, as our and I see. What? Oh, Tracy. I see Tracy okay. the, oh. Sorry, before we jump off this topic, I'm ready to endorse your list of what you would like to for recommendations right now. I've read through them, I have no problems with any of them. I know we're not having another meeting before the 10th, so. They require no expenditure by the town. They're strictly um, yeah. uh, uh, an 11-point um, mm -hmm. uh, suggest, and uh, that would benefit the town of Hampton. Yeah. Okay. I, I was just going to mention a couple of things that could impact Hampton, which um, is important. Coming off of Coakley, as you are aware, there are two major watersheds. There's the Berry Brook watershed and the mm -hmm. Little River watershed. <coughs> Um, and there's there's two different levels of investigation going on, literally. There's bedrock, which is looking for what's happening yep. underground with fissures. But the one that Representative Mesmer and I and the other representatives are very concerned about is the surface water. Um, and we were informed at the early September meeting that stormwater runoff is uh, the PFAS in stormwater, the level, uh, at Coakley is over 4,000 parts per trillion. The runoff right now going into Barry's Brook is in the level of about 1,000 for at least one of the types of PFAS. The problem is, and this is something that's really hard to grasp, but it's really important to understand, is that the EPA will not compel action until that level hits much higher. Oh, wonderful. And here's the, here's the point that, I've, that Representative Mesmer and I have been really kind of racking our brains over, yeah. is that this is flowing water. It may never reach a concentration that they're talking about, but these are bio-permanent substances, chemicals, that will go into our pristine watersheds without, us be, without any remediation. 
So one of the things that I think all of us, and I don't mean to speak for you all, but we've talked about this, uh, are very concerned about is we would like to be able to compel remediation of this surface water before it taints. We know it's going into Berry's Brook mm -hmm. and before it starts potentially tainting Little River, uh, which could impact Hampton. Um, so that would be part of, are we in agreement on that? And, I think so. It's a, it's a total remediation. Absolutely. Right. And so that would be a short-term step that could be done to make sure that the water that's coming off of yeah. Coakley is not contaminating the environment in that particular watershed. So well, first we have a mo she's already started a motion, so do I have a I'll second, second her motion? Yeah. We have a motion and second. On the points on the cancer uh, On the cancer yes. Point, yes. So any other questions no, on that? I'm in favor. All those in favor? Unanimous. I have a so, quick. Well. Does, does it occur to you, gentlemen, that we are the only creatures on the planet that are managing to destroy it <coughs> in all forms of life. The only creatures who can literally destroy life on the planet. I don't know how long we'll be around to see it, but it's a pretty horrifying thought. Well, we're doing our best right now. I know Mary Louise to help <laughs> preserve the planet for our children and our grandchildren. Bless your heart. I thank know you. you are. But thank you to so Dr. Sheridan and gentlemen. Well, while I have the, the, our state representatives Tracy. here is there any other i see go ahead tracy's waving at tracy's waving yeah tracy's waving <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> can i sit down to a mic please sure <coughs> the chairman board members thank you very much thank you. okay Appreciate it. Yeah. thank you thank you thanks bill I'm glad to see before you're you, doing uh, so uh, good with your Mike? Uh, head I, thank you right Mike back Edgar. Here, before you leave i have a quick question for you so look, okay. if you don't mind yeah. <laughs> Not getting out that easy. Um, legislatively, two years ago, or for the last two years, I should say, this term, there was quite a bit of legislation that came through. Uh, uh, Mindy did have a, a piece that came through. It went through the committee, ended up in, in my committee. Uh, what we did was amend the, the uh, legislation to do two well, many things, but the big pieces is we reorganized some of the DES because we said, why can't you pay attention to this? And the basic answer is we're not staffed for it. That's uh -huh. always the answer. So what we did was we restructured their staffing. There was a retirement coming up and there was some uh, vacancies, so we reconfigured their department so, and, so that they could hire a scientist that does nothing but water testing, period. Wow. No other jobs as assigned water testing for the state because that was a, that was a, a gap. The second person that, that they hired is a researcher. Uh, the reason we needed a researcher is because, as Mary Louise said, wh what are other towns doing? Right. Well, there's so much information out there that the people who are functionally going to do stuff like testing water aren't doing research. Right. So the DES... <laughs> who was very, very embarrassed, has been very embarrassed about this, because they've been following uh, uh, the EPA reg guidelines, and, and the EPA was wrong, only they've <laughs> never said they were wrong uh, on these chemicals. So the DES kind of has their face hanging out, and they're trying to fix it. God. So they were very amenable to having these two positions focused just on this problem. So those two positions are in, in place now. The other thing that was quite interesting is there was a lot of discussion about groundwater. There was a lot of discussion about water supply standards, which are two different standards, and that makes your eyes glaze over. Mm. Uh, but when we got all said and done, there were no standards for air. Uh -huh. So a factory could be belching stuff out, and rain comes, and it goes down yeah. to the soil, then into the groundwater. Yeah. There was no, the DES had no authority there. They could not test the air. Oh, my so we said, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> and so we amended this legislation to say now you have authority for air testing. Oh and God. what we didn't do, even though the, the uh, sponsors wanted to, is they wanted to put standards in the RSAs. And we're very reluctant to put standards like the parts per trillion in the RSAs because if they're not right, you've got to wait for a whole legislative cycle to fix it. Uh. So what we did was we 
delegated that responsibility to the commissioner. Now that he's got all this help, uh, <laughs> and with knowing that he's got the big eyeball on him. I mean, this is a big topic in Concord. It gets a lot of attention, and I just wanted to know where there has been things are being done to help get smarter about it. I think that's the big problem. We were just stupid about it. And with that, I'll... All right. <laughs> that's a good update, Tracy. Thank you. Yeah, but thank I, you, Tracy. I, I also think that, though, that sometimes the bureaucracy is a little hesitant to act to do things like adopt uh, standards that are more restrictive than the EPA would have uh, on their own without the legislature's directive. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. it's interesting that the standards for New Jersey and Vermont are 20 parts per trillion for this, and New Hampshire is at 70. Um, and I think that we ought to be at least as protective of our drinking water as the state of New Jersey is. Yeah. Can you nice gentlemen do something about red listed bridges? <laughs> and, and there, there, there are a few. Um, I did want to comment because Mary, before Mary Louise, you mentioned about how is anybody else in the state looking at this like Aquarian yeah, is? Yeah. If we had states, if we had state standards, they would be looking at it. Um, and and I think that would be very helpful. I know some of us were in favor of having some type of a state standard because uh, leaving it up the other way. Uh, it probably be reluctant to do a lot of things and that's why we pushed for state stand and didn't get it and I got a feeling we'll be pushing for it again Definitely. you right. can see where the party yeah. split yeah very thank good you. well thank you very much Mike well the question I had because while you're here see so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick you on we have uh, taken over the, the USS Virginia as uh -huh. a host town hmm. and I know you did such a wonderful job with the USS Hampton but I know you need help if you want to continue doing in that vein. And so we're going to be asking tonight about getting people to help the committee, but we're hoping that you will remain on the committee. So right. as, as Hampton being a host town. I'm and, like I, and I'm trying to put you on the spot a little bit, but think about it and, and get back to us. Um, I, I, you know, we have that. We've, we've also realized as a board that if we're going to start doing the reason why we're doing the USS uh, Virginia is because they heard of such a great job right. that was done by the USS Hampton yeah. and now they're in port for two years so they came to us and asked us if we would be the host town yeah. so it's very good but you did such a good job that you <laughs> and we're asking for some help from them yeah. if we can get it well, well thank right you Th Th thank you for asking me um, <laughs> yeah we had the committee the committee overall committee I, I thought did a good job. We have some very good members of it, and and they also might be willing to you know to continue in some capacity because as, as we've talked, we are going to try to continue uh, communicating and working with the USS Hampton. Um, yeah. And because the uh, former CO of USS Hampton um, is now uh, reassigned, he, he was promoted to captain. Is reassigned over the shipyard. We also have, as you know, we have that contact there, which is right. going to be very helpful if we do. Uh, Take on this task to uh, you know to work with other other subs that are in there, and I think that the community itself—that's what we really have to have. If we have the community that is willing to uh, support us in this role, because I think it's very good that we do do this for the for the sailors that are in port. Mm -hmm. So uh, and ho hopefully you know by getting the message out this way and also with other discussions, you know the community uh, will, will really back it. You know it, it, maybe as much as the uh, the 401 did. Uh, well, I, I think we, uh, we're looking at us and we've talked about possibly loca allocating some funds for that which would be a big help because I know you trying to raise everything yourself and, and doing it was pretty difficult. 401 was excellent by far but we can't continually go back to the same well all the time. Yeah and, and, and with some others that, 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 that Correct. contributed yeah, also but, but they, 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 they were fantastic with it and yeah I, I'd be willing to especially be on some type of a committee to, to form it and uh, to form another committee or have an explore, exploratory committee. And if you do put out a, a call for other individuals, I know especially some mariners and, uh, and some others that are very interested in this topic and in the community that uh, might, if we can get a good group that would uh, do it, that, that would work out well, I think. And are we going to do like a Warren article or something? Well, we that, talked about doing a Warren article too to, uh, to make uh, it allocate easier. some funds to make it a little yeah. easier. Okay. Could we do, do we get an official notice from the USS 
Virginia. Virginia. So maybe if we could publicize that and sort of get people to understand what's mm -hmm. going on, how we were asked. But didn't they, uh, you did didn't such they send a good us some information? Before. No, it was a telephone call. It's a telephone call. Uh, they didn't even tell us when the ship was arriving. Uh, which it for just, security reasons. Which it just yeah. did. Yeah, it, it just did. It just yeah. arrived at the Portsmouth. Yeah, it's a ship yeah. movement. They can't tell you. Yeah, they can't <laughs> tell you anything about that until it's there. So we may be calling. We may be calling upon you pretty soon to to. Yeah. Uh, to work on that committee or, or to be part of that committee. Yeah. Very good, thank you. I work. Oh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks, thank gentlemen. You. Thank you. <laughs> Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, as you heard a few minutes ago, the State Seacoast uh, Cancer Cluster Commission will be meeting on October 10th, 2018 at 10 a.m. in room 205 of the Legislative Office Building in Concord. That's a change of room. If you wrote down the, uh, the previous room allocation, it's been changed to room 205 on the 10th. Uh -huh. um, Fred, while, while you're at that point, uh, if I might have the board's authorization to attend that in behalf of the board, I know Regina might be going as well, but. I'll be happy to so move. I would love to go to that meeting on the 10th, but I have <laughs> another obligation at 10 o'clock that morning, yeah. so. Well, Prior to move that she Mark be allowed to uh, attend. Thank you and for that. Regina Thank you. Seconded it. Yes. And unanimous of the, of the board president. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mark, for all your work. Really, that was that was a remarkable uh, decision. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Fred. That's all right. Have to get those little things done you now <laughs> as, as they come along. So um, the construction work continues on Anne's Lane during the daylight hours. Please find alternate routes to avoid traffic delays due to the, the road closures. And I understand the work's going very well. They're well ahead. They put yeah. three working crews on it. And uh, they expect to be finished by the end of October as far as this year's work is concerned. Yep. And they go back in the spring and finish the final paving. The State Department of Transportation, <coughs> Transportation <coughs> excuse me, continues to work on repairs of the Tide Mill Road Bridge at Route 101. Traffic lights have been installed in can cause delays at busy times of the day. Uh, if you have a critical need to get somewhere, my suggestion is that you provide an alternate route for your own sanity. Uh, there are a number of different things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on uh, September 17th, uh, the board voted to authorize the Department of Public Works to investigate uh, changing our vendor for construction and demolition wastes. And I'm going to ask that the board res go back and rescind that vote because after looking, after having council look at the, at the contract that's currently in effect, and I read the contract that's currently in effect myself, uh, we have a little over a year to go before we can do anything. So uh -huh. we shouldn't be doing anything for at least another 9 to 12 months. So I need a motion I'll to rescind that to previous rescind. order. I'll yes. second that to vote. All those in favor? Yes. The, uh, we talked a second ago about the USS Virginia. It is uh, scheduled to have a placking ceremony on the 10th of this month uh, at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. They are going to give me some further details on that, but they will want folks from Hampton to be there and be present for the placking ceremony. So mm. as soon as they get that additional information, I'll spread it far and wide so everybody will know what's going on. And we, <laughs> we really do need some additional help uh, on, the, on the submarine committee for the town. It's the USS Hampton committee. Uh, we, I guess the town's kind of made a name for itself. Our w w name has gotten around for the to the uh, submarine fleet, and uh, they would like to have Hampton serve as the uh, as their um, base of operations while they're at the naval shipyard for refitting and refueling. So and I, I'm told they're going to be there for about two years. About two years wow. is correct, uh, and I think that's a good time. That's the same. The Hampton was there for just about two, a little over two years. So, uh, and they have been, the Hampton was a great help to us here in town. Yeah. And I'm assuming that the, uh, the Virginia, which is the lead class in their ship, will also be uh, a great help to us here in town and be able to enjoy some of the activities that we have. I think it's, uh, we've, you know, we've done this in the past for the USS Hampton, and this is the second time we did it. And uh, I think Hampton, it, the people of yeah. Hampton have done the town proud and, and also the, the ships, and it, I, I take it as a great honor that the other ships are looking at it yeah. and looking at Hampton as wanting to be a host town. So yeah. we beg of people out there that would like to, if you want to volunteer, you want to do something good, 
we'll, we're going to be setting up the committee. We already have a committee for the USS Hampton, but we might be changing that a little bit. But if you, if you want to show some interest, please yeah. let the town office know. Don't forget to mention it's a lot of fun. Everybody <coughs> had a good time doing this. So, Absolutely. Uh, come and enjoy the activities. Uh, the United States uh, Army Corps of Engineers held a meeting uh, last week with the town of Seabrook uh, to go over their request for where they want the material put from the dredging of the harbor. Ah. And they have sent me a, uh, a communication requesting that the town uh, send them a plan showing where we would like to have the material placed. Um, we know for certain, and we asked them for certain, that they place it on the east side of the uh, the bridge on the west side of the town on the uh, Sun Valley end, uh, because that that area in there has we've lost 175 feet of frontage. Wow! Uh, an entire town lot is gone, yeah. and the area going into Portsmouth Street is disappearing like crazy. So mm. we would like to have them put that in there as well as uh, preserving. The abutments, the bridge, which are mm -hmm. almost eroded away to the to the road surface yeah. and back. So that would be one of the recommendations. The other recommendation would be to put it out near Beckman's Point and along the beach, so that in fact that erosion that's occurring out there will in fact cease. Will we have some some uh, some time to, for that to repair itself? Wow. So yeah. with with your permission, uh, I'll have Public Works make up the necessary paperwork and diagrams and and, and charts and submit that to the Army Corps of Engineers. Do this we need a motion or do you want to? I, it would be something. great to have a motion on I'll that. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. So let them, Very good. Let Thank them you. know about where we, we want to make put sure that gets the core. Yeah. Um, Mark is here and he has been working like uh, uh -oh. uh, a ditch digger looking for a career in China or trying to get there, <laughs> working on a colony motel. So I'm going to ask him to come up here and give you kind of a briefing of where we are at the moment and what's going on there. Yes, the, um, it, there was appointed a temporary conservator by the Suffolk County yeah. uh, Probate Court uh, regarding the assets of the individual involved. And uh, the conservator <laughs> came up to New Hampshire and met a week ago Saturday with mm. Attorney Casaza to review the situation here. Um, I then spoke to him personally uh, following the board's uh, lead uh, of authority given and the uh, attorney indicated that he would be seeking the appointment of someone in New Hampshire for that purpose of doing the same thing and, and taking any steps that this board felt would be necessary to alleviate any um, nuisances or health, public health conditions. And so um, I indicated to the attorney that I had been given authority by this board to uh, seek appointment ourselves. But I think if uh, this person said he would be attending to that, I've indicated to them that we would hold off for a, a brief period of time to allow him to do that. Good. Um, I think it's good and I'm glad you're staying on top of it. Yeah. The most important thing is that we have that property safe and secure. Yeah. And his other piece of, he has other property in Hampton too. And, and that may need to be looked at as well while he's here. Exactly. So. And um, I have written him a letter indicating what our desires were with regard to both properties. Okay. okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. Any other questions? I've got, got one other thing that Mark and I have been working on, which okay. is the uh, Hampton Cemetery Association, uh. um, which is a defunct organization legally, anyhow. Uh, it's it, in reality it's still there so I, I'd ask him to give you a quick briefing on what he has done um, he's worked very hard on this to try to get this resolved uh, so that we can put the entire cemetery situation back in order mm -hmm. okay. Go ahead. yeah there is uh, the Hampton Cemetery Association was formed uh, mm -hmm. back in the early 1900s mm -hmm. to perform basically the same sort of functions that our cemetery trustees have been performing since 1986, uh, pursuant to a town meeting vote. Um, and over a period of time, the Hampton Cemetery Association, uh, whose directors were in many cases former selectmen, uh, <laughs> have now had their ranks depleted and therefore there, oh, there's only one officer left, which is Eleanor Whitney, the treasurer. Uh, she has 
uh, access to approximately $170,000 worth of funds, uh, but has no ability to do anything with those. And so uh, pursuant to some uh, court petitions that uh, the uh, Charitable Trust Division of the Attorney General's Office has urged people to, to file, uh, I have drafted and uh, Eleanor Whitney has signed a uh, petition to the Superior Court uh, to not only dissolve the Hampton Cemetery Association, but also to uh, ask that its monetary assets be transferred to our trustees of the trust funds Excellent. to be made part of the same type of fund, uh, the Hampton um, Maintenance, the Maintenance Fund, um, which would be uh, the principle of which would be available for use upon town meeting vote. Good. Um, in addition, it appears there may be some uh, properties, real estate that were, was deeded at one time to the Hampton Cemetery Association. So I've included that in the draft court petition that I've, I've given to you. The authority that the board gave last week to do this uh, was only for the probate court. And I would ask the board to move to uh, expand the authority so that a petition can be filed in the Superior Court. I'll make that motion. Second. Any other questions on that? Good. Thank you. Thank All you. those in favor? Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Mark. That's great. Yeah, looking Thank at some you. of the people that were, were there, you know, there are some people who are around here a long time. I'm looking at Robert Daniels and, you know, Frank Fitzgerald. Oh, yeah. Correct. Uh, Julia Brown. Exactly. You know, all people that, that did this, and they did they did a lot for a long time, but I think time has come where yeah. we need to take it back under. Sure. And and this would include, as I said, the transfer of real estate as well. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, because these ladies have sat here all I'm evening. I'm just about to start recycling. Yeah. <laughs> so we can, uh, can we talk about that? Yep. That's yeah. my next subject. Okay. Thank you. Um, actually, there's two portions of the subject, but I'm going to talk about the letters that were sent out at the board's direction. Um, a number of years ago, when the town was making a lot of money on recycling, and we were making a sizable amount of money each month on recycling because the product was being sold. Um, the, recently, the Chinese government has decided that they would like to stop buying recycled materials. They're trying to strangle the market down. They're trying to close it down to a very small market. Uh, so they have generally, I guess the way to, to express it is they have put requirements on the recycled materials that are so severe, it's almost impossible to recycle some materials now. For instance, in plastics, uh, they used to take everything from number one plastic to number 10 plastic. Now they're only interested in number one and number two. If you put something else in and one piece gets in, in a load that's an entire ship, the whole thing is contaminated. They won't accept it. So things are, are changing very quickly in the marketplace. Um, we are no longer uh, being paid for our recycling. We now have to pay to get rid of it. Yeah. That's a problem. Uh, in the particular case, and these ladies uh, brought the subject up tonight, uh, we had 20 uh, condominiums in town, most of them businesses, but there were a few residentials, uh, who asked permission to participate in the recycling program uh, and their, because their material could be sold and the town could make money with the treasury and would help defray taxes. Uh, all of those received letters that were given a part of that program because each one of them has in their condominium documents a requirement where the condominium was put into, into effect, and it's recorded in the Registry of Deeds in each of those documents, that they have to take care of their own solid waste. How they do that is, of course, at their, at their pleasure. Um, most of them have dumpsters. A lot of them have individual collections. Uh, it just depends upon the individual place. But we're, in fact, prohibited from collecting material. Uh, the board gave an exemption to that when the town was actually being paid, so they actually receive some benefit themselves because it helped defray some of their taxes. Uh, right now, it doesn't defray anything. In fact, it costs us money to collect them. Mm. So the board ordered us to, in fact, implement the requirements for those 20 recycling uh, programs to end them immediately 
and to um, recover the, the carts that were issued that are town property. Uh, okay. So that kind of, in a, in a footnote, that kind of is what happens. All these records are recorded in the Registry of Deeds at the time the condominiums were formed. Um, the planning board and the selectmen required that they, they in fact comply with taking care of their own trash, their own recycling and, 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 and wastes. Uh, that's in fact in the deeds and in, in, the, uh, in the condominium documents. Those can't be changed except by reopening the entire condominium, mm -hmm. which is a horrendous task. In other words, you would be subject to discontinuous, uh, discontinuation of the condominium mm -hmm. uh, at the town's desire. But they can't be changed without the town's permission, and that would be the way you do it. Uh, we don't want to go there if we don't have to because <laughs> the legal costs would be horrendous for both the condominium and for the town. But Can we are ask, required by law to enforce that. Can I ask how many bins you're talking about? Because I know we only have three. For yeah, there years. are very few issued. There were, they went to 20 different vendors. Most of them have one or two. There's a couple that have three, and that's it. I mean, there are not a lot of bins. But we have a policy in town. If a bin is on the street, we mm -hmm. pick it up. Yeah. Because we don't want one left out there that's full of trash. That would be the wrong thing to do, or recycling either. Um, you have three recycling bins, right. as I understand it, for the 30 units that are there, right. and you have a certain percentage of people who contribute material into that. That material will have to go into your normal waste stream at this point. Okay. When we come around in accordance with the letter that we sent you, and we pick up those, those bins for the last time, there'll be a truck coming right around behind the truck that picks the bins up and empties them to pick them up and bring them back to Public Works where they'll be, they'll be cleaned and if they can be put back in service, they will be put back in service. If not, they'll be destroyed. My only question to that was how much is the town really saving by cutting this off because there's, they go right by to go to the others. We can't we pick yours up. Bins. We can't pick and yours up. No, I'm talking about all the condominiums in town. We can't How pick many? any of those up. Because it's in Can the docks. Wait. Most condominiums in town have that requirement on them. There are a few that do not. For one reason or another, I can't tell you it was done long before I arrived here. But most of the condominiums in town have to take care of their own trash. In we order have, to stop we our own trash. Yeah. We only had recycling. But my, my but that is that trash. You had we had an agreement with you to do it because you were getting making money on it. Now because you're not, I'm just wondering how much money you're losing if you had continued to just pick up these few bins instead well, of sending on. We can't by law pick them up. It's not a matter of whether we can or but we you've cannot. You've been doing it. Yeah. Well, they shouldn't have been doing it, but they yeah. gave you they gave you permission because you asked for permission. Yeah. Your board of directors asked for permission to do this mm. when the town was making money on the recycling. Fred, can I say something? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, first of all, we did it. I just want to point out that this has been talked about and talked about and talked about exactly like he's talking about now. We've been talking about it for weeks, and it's unfortunate that you probably didn't hear about it. It's probably been reported in the newspaper. Um, we didn't know about it until we got the letters. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate, but these things happen all the time. I was on the board when we did ask people to, you know, we tried to be nice about it and... <laughs> Um, went out of our way because we did well we are making money but um, in general the whole trash uh, pickup is going to be discussed uh, and we're working on it right now and it's going to be changed for uh, for everyone I mean you, it's not going to be changed for you because you pick your own trash up like you're supposed to and um, there's going to be adjust, ma major adjustments in the trash pickup and the recycling um, so it's not that I just wanted to point out it's not just you that this happened to and it has been talked about and unfortunately you just missed it. Um, and I know that I brought it up, I went to my condominium meeting the other night, uh, other Saturday, this last Saturday, and I, because I wasn't really sure if we were, if they were using it or not. The condo that, where I have a condo, they, they weren't using them anyway. So we, everyone got a letter there and everyone was confused. So it is kind of confusing because we weren't using the trash or the recycling. Mm. So, but it has been discussed here in a great deal and it is okay for you just to go ahead and put it in your regular trash. It'd be great if we could do it and maybe sometime in the future if it changes about how the money situation is, maybe there can be something different. But legally, we never should have been doing it to begin with. Right. But the prior boards that I was on, 
we tried to be nice about it and you know we did it and it was probably a mistake what I would just like to ask uh, the manager what official date is what's the drop dead date I, I don't know yeah. what, or, what Sorry, today. 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 Okay. October 1st yeah, right okay yeah Go ahead. Oh, we usually don't because of our time meeting, but go ahead. Are you eventually going to stop picking up for single family homes also? No. This is only pertains to multifamily structures, okay. condominiums that have more than five units. Mm -hmm. And okay. what about businesses? Businesses, it, well, if they're condominiums, it's the same. It doesn't matter whether it's a business or residential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's five units, if it's more than five units, we do not pick them up. How about okay. hotels? Yeah, if it's more than five units, we don't pick them up. Hotel? That's, what's, that's what, how it's been. That was the main yeah. thing that the we hotel decided. is one unit. Yeah. Right, because it's, it's one owner. Good right. grief. Yeah. Could be a big unit, but it's one unit by yeah, law. Heaven. So, yeah. uh, and that's the way when these condominiums were formed, that the planning board uh, instructed uh, the, the developers. That was part of the deal when you, when you want to develop a condominium. What are you going to pay the town to allow you to do this? And that was part of the deal that you pay for the trash, and the town doesn't. So, so it was decided any more than five units, and that's and this actually was last year, and it's just evolving, and we are working on it, and it's a, it's going to be in a state of flux for a little bit. But now those condominiums that that have a requirement within their documents that are filed in the registry, it doesn't matter whether they have. 50 units or one unit, they're not going to get picked up. We have, we have con single person, uh, we have duplex housing in town, okay, convexes. Yeah. And in and, and, and one case, we have one side that we don't pick the trash up, and the other side we do. <laughs> because the owner structured it that way when he made up the documents and got it approved by the planning board. Good grief. So it was something that came in through the system to us for approval, and the planning board approved it. Mm. That's where these all came from. Messy. When's a good time for me to stop by to pick up copies of the documents? Uh, sometime after 9, give us a chance to get through all this paperwork. Okay. And we'd be happy to uh, give I'll you the be, copy. Be Thank you okay. for your attention and yes. coming in and being yes. part of our meeting. We're kind of just frustrated. We're yeah, no, and I know, and, and that's why know, I wanted you. I'm glad you stayed. Yeah, yeah no, it makes it, a lot of it, sense. It, and we wanted you to try to understand a little bit. But it, I did want you to know it has been And it, it's not just happening here. It's happening all over the country. Yeah. That How about the with, recycling? About the recycling is, is, yeah, and so. not having any place for it to go. It's yeah. not just waste Probably management, it's Bernard, it's terrorists. all of them. Blame China. Yeah. So. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, Fred. It's discouraging. Uh, it is discouraging. Uh, I forwarded to the board, dated September 26th, a memorandum dealing with changes to your recycling ordinance. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I sort of put together all the things that you've talked about in the last few months. Yeah. Uh, I'm not proposing that we go through that tonight, but I am proposing that we put that on the, your next agenda, which will be in two weeks. Good. So that you can talk about them, decide what you want to do, what you don't want to do, uh, and so we can move forward with something. And, and, and the things that you are, I'm not suggesting, but have just brought up are in the first four pages. The rest of it yes. is actually our ordinance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I did include a copy of the selectman's ordinance, right. right? Which is authorized by the town meeting ordinance for you to make the regulations on recycling and trash. Yeah. Okay. So good. That's it. That's enough. <laughs> Any questions for the Very manager quick. on his report? Very quick uh, question: uh, Do we have a definition of that industrial surcharge fee for Wright Pierce yet? I, I'm reviewing, and I sent back. 60 pages worth of regulations oh, marked God, up. Bless us. Okay, so they have got to get those re re uh, revised and sent back to okay. me so I can give them to the board. Okay. And all those all those fees and regulations are in there. Okay, I'll behave myself. <laughs> Thank you. Virginia? Okay. I have a question about the harbor dredging. And when is the estimated date for that? The Army Corps doesn't have a date because they don't have an appropriation. And oh, they're, they're, okay. Yeah. I didn't know are, something had changed because I was They late. are talking about either two thousand late 2019 between November and February 2020 or 2000, February, December, November 2020 uh, to uh, February 2021. By then, there'll be condos built on that island in the, in the river. 
Well, there won't be a harbor. It'll be full. Well, we don't need a big Anything else for the town manager on his report? Good. Seeing none, old business. RSA 4114 vote for 282 number 8th Street. And that's something that you have now held two hearings on. I don't believe that you have had any comments whatsoever right. with regards to removing the restrictions. And the, what they want to do, they want to go from a three foot to a four foot high that's ornamental right. fence, correct? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Yep. Unanimous. There. Sorry. Sorry, you had to wait so long. That's okay. Can I just ask you a quick, quick question? Sure. Okay, so I just want to make sure I have everything in the right place. From this point now, do I go and get a permit to put the fence up, or is that just... You do need a permit to erect it, yes. Okay. Building department. To, all right. I yeah. wanted to make sure I was <laughs> do, doing do, the right thing. Do we have to record the deed restriction? Um, yes, I believe town council does have to do that. Yeah. So we'll have to record the deed restriction or, or the release of the deed restriction right. first. Mm -hmm. So you might want to you might want to check in a couple of days and talk with the uh, the yeah. town attorney, or, okay. or give the town manager a call to see now, if that's been done. If I do that now and by some chance it doesn't get done this fall, will it be okay in the spring still? Or still you have a year for a building permit, a I believe. Year? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. You should be okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. The Number two on the old business, we have the MRI classification and compensation study. Good evening. Good evening, wow. sir. Um, so just as a, an overview, as you recall, we've, um, we've talked about this MRI study a number of times. And for folks at home, uh, this is the study that the board commissioned to take a look at non-union wages, yeah. how they compare against uh, other communities of similar positions. And then that, <coughs> pardon me, that uh, study made certain recommendations. That's why we're here tonight to talk to you about that. We've had the recommendations, we've reviewed them here, and we're looking for the board's guidance on how we should proceed in this budget year. As we've talked about, there's multiple things. The board can choose to do nothing. Or the board can choose to take action on this. It's the recommendation of, of the manager's office and we that we do take some action on this in the budget. I uh, would like to know how the board wishes to proceed. Questions from the board? But, Gina? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was looking through the report and they identified roughly, I think it was about 13 or 14 employees that fell below the minimum that they have seen when they did their study. You know, they looked at our organization and then they went out and they looked at the different other organizations that they looked at. And one of the other recommendations is that perhaps we could do it over more than one year so as not to affect everything in one year budget-wise. That's right. But now that we are coming up on the budget season and it's going to be coming to the selectmen and then it will go off to the budget committee, I think it might be a good idea if we could at least get what the numbers would look like so that the board or whoever could see what the effect could potentially be and then maybe better determine whether or not it's something that we wanted to look into. Sure. So the initial recommendations were um, for those, again, that set up a classification and a range for each right. of the classifications they set up. And their recommendation on those 13 you're talking about, there's some 30 total positions it looked at, was that we move those 13 people up to at least the minimum of their classification range, the others being already at the minimum or above. Um, that estimate was roughly in the 50 to 55,000 range. But again, there's some adjustments in that we do. And you're absolutely right. One of the recommendations was either A, you can do it all at once, or their recommendation is you can do it over a couple of budgets, budget years. And that's what, what I understand we've had some discussions on and that, that, that some of the board members are interested in doing is to move that over a couple of years. That'll help the manager and I as we, we put together the budget for you to review so we have some guidance on how you wish to proceed with that. And then as far as what that actual number would be, <coughs> we would reflect that in the salary line on the respective budget of wherever the person so, is from? So, correct. What we would do is, um, in the salary area, you know that's the annual, there is a line item in the budget that deals with annual raises. And in addition to that, we would then take whatever the board's direction is and put that into the budget 
and highlight that to you when we come back with the full budget this year. All right, great. Thank you very much. The date really? that this would start would be? It's in the 2019 budget cycle, and it would be our anticipation that it would be in April if it were to pass April at the March. 1st. Correct, in the March time upon, meeting. Upon the passage of the budget. And in 2000, the, correct. And for the two-year period, the 55000 covers the two years? No, that's the, the point we're asking for direction. So 55 was doing it all at once. So as I understand it, if, what we'll be looking for is a motion. If it's the board's desire to do that over two years. I'll make we'll, a motion to do it over two years. But that's what I'm asking. If you would we're expect doing it that over to be two years. Mm -hmm. Are we spreading the fifty-five thousand? Yes, over, over two years. years. Yes, over yes. two years. So what you're doing is taking that fifty-fifty-five and cutting it in half and doing it over right. two years. Correct. That's, I'll second Rick's motion. That's a little less scary. So the guidance on the motion is to, for us to come back with a budget and show you the numbers to spread that over two years. Is that correct? Correct. I wish we had the whole board here, but I understand. Yeah. You know the importance of getting yeah. it done now so that we can. You, as, as you are working on the budgets and you've get, got yeah. them in. And so. you can change the budgets if you want. Correct. Correct. And we, and we are talking the 2019 budget. Yes, yes. Correct. that's what we're yes. talking yes. on the budget. That's yeah. what we're okay. talking about. Yeah, I mean, pretty so I, have a, okay. sorry, cut. I just want to clarify that all we're really trying to do is see what the effect would be so that it can be presented, presented with on the, the budget. budget. Correct. Now that we're coming to this time of year. Yes. Correct. As part of the budget. Correct. Right? Yeah, it's finalized. We've, we've had this report for some time, yes. and it's now it's time for the board to take action, or not, right. but to take action and give us guidance how you'd like us to proceed. So right. I have a motion and a second to spread this over the two years and bring it back to us and, and let us see what the, the It'll be in the budget back. presentation that you'll see when right. we come forward very shortly. Yep. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Wait, who seconded? Oh, I did. You did. Okay. Right. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. We Anything else on the old business? No. New business? Nothing new business. We have the... Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The uh, new business, we have the uh, assessing clerk position. Right. Sure. So just give an update of where we're at. As, as you know, the board has given authorization to fill that as a full-time position. We're in the midst of interviews of candidates now. Uh, we have a number of, of uh, good candidates that are coming forward, so we feel pretty confident we'll be able to fill that uh, pretty quickly. Um, and uh, just to point back out that it was a non-union position, but based on prior negotiations, it, it's going to become a union position in the Teamsters uh, is, is a new position now. So, and that was have, agreed to back when, when they had negotiations, wasn't it? Uh, two contracts ago, yes. Two contracts ago. Correct. When this position changed, it would be brought back into the... To the Correct. There were a number of positions that were uh, removed or it somehow came out from under the contract, which were part of the original recognition clause, but they were not um, done appropriately at the PELRB, so they were never effectively removed. So uh, there was an agreement to return those positions where they belonged and did it through attrition, so that as those positions vacated, when they came up again, then they would return to the union. And that's what we're doing here. Great question. Now, just to clarify for the public, because they don't always understand this week to week, this is a new position because this position has been vacant for some time. This was a part-time position. Right. Which was recently opened again. It's had several people in and out of it. Right. And the board uh, authorized moving it to full time given the reorganization we did in the assessing department. Right. And the reorganization means we no longer have a full time assessing officer there. Therefore, the assistant assessing individual is going to be still full time in the office and will work with this assessing clerk. Yes, ma'am. Fair? Yes. Okay. Yes, along with so with, we know. With so the MRI. contract we have a contract assessor who performs the assessing functions as yes. a certified assessor, and this will have two full time people in the office who will do one does technical work and mm -hmm. paperwork, and the other one is mostly your paperwork, doing Excellent. your um, you know making sure all the paperwork and the pickups from the building department are done appropriately, yeah. the abatements, the all of those applications that come in for. Uh, veterans and elderly exemptions, yeah. all of that process is correctly. And this too will be reflected in the 2019 budget? This is an immediate, immediate okay. action that the board has voted that we're doing as we speak. But this will translate into And it will carry over, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay. And so will the savings as a result of the reorganization right. we discussed. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We'll see if Rick has anything. 
Ah. Do you have anything on this? That's all right. No. Thank you. Assessing Thank clerk. You. So do we need a, we need a motion. Do we need a motion for this? I, I don't think you do this with just an update at this point in time. Oh, um, okay. Yep. And we'll move forward and keep the board apprised. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Anything else under new business? Yeah. I have something. Yeah. Let Rick go. Go ahead, now. Rick. Well, um, I just wanted to point out that because, um, you know, um, the I had some phone calls today and there even though it appears you know everything went well with the uh, race and everything there are some people that are complaining about the road being blocked off mm -hmm. yeah. particularly at Boar's Head there's yeah. some elderly people that live there there's two different groups two different houses that are concerned about their um, emergency exit yes from there and uh, you know, they're elderly people that they felt they couldn't get out of their homes. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring that up, throw it out there. And I explained to them that I'd feel more comfortable if they would write a letter, but um, they just don't want to. And if they, had an emer if they had an emergency, I'm sure our police and fire department would be there mm -hmm. immediately to get oh, there. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think I have the same thing. I've had verbal comments about mm -hmm. it was different than it was usually, I think, the way. Yeah. And I talked a little bit about the chief when I saw him tonight yeah. because they changed the pattern, I guess, a little bit. But I guess at, for some point in time, both Ashworth and 1A were closed off, uh, which I don't ever remember happening before. Mm -hmm. so and I'm, I'm not, sure not sure if these that. people could work. They wouldn't have been able to take a right or... Uh, you know, because I have a business right there, and I did have one person that was coming down 101, and they just happened to call me because they hadn't been to me before, and they and I said, well, you know, you need to, you'd be better off if you went down to Winnicott Road, and it was some kid, and he didn't mind; he was only 17, <laughs> and uh, so I said, you know, if you go down, you get a, you know. He was that hard odds way when he called and just happened to mention it. And I said, You need to turn around and go down one kind of road. And he was able to come and there was no problem. Um, and with just by chance, all the other people I had, it really wasn't a problem because they came that way. Mm. So it wasn't a problem for me. And I was kind of surprised about that. You know? Yeah, uh, you know, it does happen a few times a year when we have yeah. these races. But, yeah. but these people, I, they, I felt bad. You know, they, and I want to, we want to listen to them. Yeah, we so know that for there's something we can do. We maybe for have to think about that about how are people going to get off, mm -hmm. up, off yeah. if they're elderly. Whatever. Okay. So I'm just throwing that out there. I also want to tell you um, that I had a comment too, and it shows that you can't make everybody happy. I had some people complaining about the speed bumps. A lot, so many people have been asking for speed bumps, yeah. and now I've had some complaints yeah. about the speed bumps. So, and I told them they should write. No one wants to complain now. Do are the new speed bumps? No, I, they were the complaining no. about the ones actually on the way to. Uh, yeah. But it was that street, yeah. Oh, oh more? street. Yeah. yeah, they were actually complaining about those. They just want you to get mail, Rick. Well, no, they came actually to see me. Oh, good. About it. Any other so, new business? Yeah. Whatever. I, um, <laughs> well, under new business, we just heard uh, on the um, Coakley. Uh, ruling and, and the nice gentlemen who were in here tonight about RSA 91A and I still have a question as to whether it is legal for us to meet behind closed doors with paid employees of the state of New Hampshire. We have the meeting coming up November 1st. I object to having that meeting non-public and I just want to know if we can get a little clarification on 91A and the meeting with state employees. They are not even elected officials. May, can I comment on one thing on this? Because I've actually talked to town council about yeah. this. Oh, good. And I'm told, and the town manager actually was involved in the conversation. Blame Fred. Go ahead. Well, no, but if he wants to, uh, if he has any, if he doesn't think I'm saying it right, I want him to jump in. But because we will have our town council there, and because the state is also going to be have council there, the attorney's general office, that the non-public will definitely be, will have lawyers involved. So I think that legally we should 
be allowed to meet in non-public, which you said. Absolutely. So, but I agree with you that I would prefer it not be in non-public. I totally But at the agree. same time, we are elected officials, and we were elected by the people of this town. And if we can sit down with these guys and meet with them and get some type of satisfaction, hopefully, out of them, then I think that it is better than nothing, which is what we've mm -hmm. And it's yet. about a potential legal suit. Yeah, well, I still object. And that but. is the rule. That that's is the I'd law. Ask. That okay. how that that is its voice that way. That if you're involved in any legalities like that, you can. So, anything else on the new business? Motion to adjourn would be in order. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second Thank you. at nine twenty-six. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel Thank Twenty-Two. You.